It's time for Twig. This week at Google, Jeff Jarvis is here. Stacey Higginbotham is here. Lots to talk about, including new pricing plans for Google Fi, the Google Culture Gallery that's all the rage. You won't believe who Stacey looks like. And why you can't search for gorillas in your Google Photos. It's all coming up next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 440, recorded Wednesday, January 17th, 2018. Shugu Guru Lyman Van Vliet. It's time for Twig, This Week in Google, the show where we cover the latest news from the Google-verse. Well-versed in Google, Jeffrey Jarvis, professor of journalism at CUNY. He's even written a book about Google called What Would Google Do? What Would They Do? Buzzmachine.com. Is it out of date? I mean, would, is Google operating the same way they did when you uh, wrote the book? Uh, I actually think they are pretty much. Okay. Just they became a mobile company is the main difference. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, and, and every company has to the change, but there's are, also, are similar. Yeah, yeah, there's also the DNA, the heritage, the way the company was founded yeah. that doesn't change much. And also joining us, I don't know who the hell this is. It looks, well. Stacy's <laughs> been kidnapped. The lower third says Stacy Higginbotham of StacyOnIoT.com. But you're telling me that's not uh, permanent, which, the blonde hair. It is a wig. Yeah, it's cute. If you want, I'll wear <laughs> my purple she one says next that's week. So I really like exhausted. it. I really like it. Um. What do we think about Stacey as a blonde? I think I like you as a brunette, but I'm just used to you as a brunette. But I'm, you, you know. I'm both. Tana. Yeah, you, she's two a, tone. But the, she's a blue net. <laughs> yes, I'm a blue net normally. I kind of have two colors in my hair. You know, this uh, actually ties into the first story of the day because the viral hit uh, of the of the week is this Google Arts and Letters app that everybody's going, all the kids are going crazy about that takes a picture of you. It's been out for months. We've known about this for months, but all of a sudden it was discovered. Thank you, Instagram, for making it a hit. Didn't they add a new feature? It wasn't the matching was a new feature for this app because oh, this had always been. Okay. So what you do, uh, and you've not done it, but I'll just give you an example and maybe um, a cautionary word of warning. This is what I did. I did this, uh, I can't remember which show that I was, <laughs> that I was doing. So that I'm just warning you, uh, the results are not always flattering. So what happens is no. uh, it takes a picture of you, and uh, in the app, you, it's a little hard to find. What uh, I'll help you do it in a second, and then it goes through its vast arts and culture collection of artworks and comes up with what it using face matching technology. What do you think, Jeff? Is that a, that's a pretty good likeness? You think? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. So let me show you. See, I got. Uh, Did you get one? See or not? Yeah, I got. Let's see here. You don't I look got like the beard. You know, that looks, look like, that looks like Abe Lincoln's Nose secretary. And I got another guy with a beard. You know, of course, yeah. uh, Google can't see my face because I'm actually a ghost. I feel and like there's yeah. a side view of this guy. In a way, this this one of me was good because it, it reminded me that even though I don't feel like an old man, apparently I am. <laughs> I and did it earlier. I was just thinking that this, that this guy is probably my age, right? It's a... Yeah. He's Charles Wellington First. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Sir George Grove, the painter, is Charles Wellington First from the Royal College, College of Art and Music. And he looks a little like Ben Franklin. He does. And mine just identified my Pratchett. guy as yeah. older gentleman. Older gentleman. Pissed me off. So are you ready, Stacey? So and, and I it, can't. Because Texas is the other state. <laughs> that is, so says the chat room. So this, this, we can try it. But. This is in Illinois and Texas. Illinois has a state law. What the what? That says you can't do biometric facial recognition? Can't you get permission for it? I mean, it Jeez. seems odd because obviously a lot of what, like if you have an iPhone 10, you're doing it. If you post yeah. a picture to Facebook, you're doing it. Does it is Facebook well, prohibited in Texas? Well, no, but so this is a privacy aspect. So the iPhone does not share your face with Google's or Apple's AI efforts. So that's what this is about. 
Facebook oh, has been sued by Illinois Attorney oh, General. Oh, okay, because it would be. This is exactly what Facebook does. So yeah. Oh, they've sued a lot of people. <laughs> so Illinois has, has has argued with Snapchat, Shutterfly, United Airlines. This seems like stores. a strange law. Uh, maybe it wasn't written correctly, but <laughs> I mean, if you choose to do it, sure, yeah, you, you should be able to do it. Yeah, I but mean, Google isn't exactly upfront about like when your friends like check out this cool app. It's not like Google's saying it could the, the app could stop and say you know what you're doing now. Well, you're how stupid up, do soul. you have to be but not to understand? It's uploading your picture to Google sure, so yeah. it can search. I mean, it's kind of okay. That is a very high bar. There's a lot of people who of don't understand people. what's happening. <laughs> okay, all right. Just saying. Uh, so uh, there is an article in the Houston Chronicle, if you're really interested, by a good friend named Dwight Silverman, how to get around the block in Texas oh. and Illinois. It just it okay. turn off location, basically. Uh, iOS settings, privacy location services, and just turn it off. Uh, or um, you could use a VPN. Uh, it's not I was going to say, I can do a VPN, but I'm not really that excited about the not face. that worthwhile. Uh, so next time I'm in California, I'll see. To prove that it's possible, Dwight did it. Uh, he's in Houston. Uh, and he uh, looks exactly like a uh, portrait of Baron Samuel Von somebody or other. I, this, mm. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I don't. None of them are that spot on. No, there was right. this thing was of good. people standing in Stop museums. It. You're what doing you do? that just to get me annoyed. What you do? I mean, especially since I can't do it and get some sort of. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're safe. You're safe. Huh. Uh, I'm sorry, Jeff. <laughs> Stacy oh, and I were bickering. Go ahead. What were you saying? Mom, Dad. <laughs> um, there was a, there was a meme of people standing next to paintings that looks like them. That was actually good. Uh, hold on, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, but you'd it. have to, that's a lot of work. You have to go find it. There we go, yeah. Um, you leave your Images house. for people <laughs> standing next to paintings. Do, do, go ahead and, and, and look. For, look. I, I search for people standing next to paintings that look like them. Can't you just understand what I want, Google? Oh, that would probably be illegal in <laughs> Illinois. And it would be a violation. It would be a violation. So there's a few of them here. There's like one or two of them here. There's a yeah. guy with the... Uh, the guy on the top there. That's a pretty good one, except for the that's pretty good one. Batik shirt. That's a good that's one. That's pretty good. The yeah. bald guy, the balding guy, is good. <laughs> Those are actually the people in American Gothic. Just so well, you know. But, but Ken Tucker, who used to be the TV critic at Entertainment Weekly, yeah, uh, it gave him American Gothic, and he does look like it. It's hilarious. Yeah. So, I don't know exactly why I'm getting these. Well, I think because it's Google search. It's, yeah. It's mixed uh, in with the meme. Here's uh, Z said, sorry. Kumail Ninjani. Did it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no. Should Oops. I not scroll any farther? No, I'm sure it's fine. It's Google yeah, I'm sure. What could possibly go wrong? I what think could I, go wrong? I think Is your safe search on? Yeah, I think the top, I should turn it on, the shouldn't I? That's the, yeah. the, there's no others. Monet does not look like his water lilies, I just want to say. Oh, there's a guy in a knight thing, uh, in, a, in, a, in a knight's armor. With a white beard. That's oh, that's funny. funny. He's, posed, that's he's, posed, he's in Knight's Armor, posing next to Knight's Armor. No, no, there's Knight's Armor and he's in a sweater. Oh, I don't see that one. But okay. I got a different That's search. the filter bubble we live, we all live in. It as, is. As Mr. Barack searches. Obama mentioned in his interview with David Letterman on Netflix. I haven't watched yet. How was it? He, I haven't watched it yet. He talks about the filter bubble. Uh, in fact, the only controversial thing is they said at all was that uh, we live in two different worlds, many of us. People who watch Fox News aren't in the same world that people who watch CNN or MSNBC. He said it. He said that, and that was fairly controversial. And uh, But then he talked about the filter bubble, and he said, if you and I search for the same word on Google, we'll get different results because uh, Google tailors the results to you. And that's and so he talked about that filter bubble issue, which you, you have, this is from Eli Pariser's uh, book, mm -hmm. and you have... Mm -hmm. I've debated many times, yeah, debated this and said, and I kind of, I've come around to your sense. Uh, the, although it is true that we tend to hear what we want to hear and surround ourselves with people who say what we want it, you know, especially politically, but in every respect, who think the same way we do. The beauty of the internet is, is you stuff still leaks in. You, yeah, but 
I'll come around a little bit too. I, 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 you know, I've been arguing lately. I've said this on the show that I think the Facebook's greatest opportunity is to introduce us to people we don't know, make strangers less strange. And the filter bubble is not an information filter bubble so much as a human filter bubble, uh, where we just don't. There's not enough diversity. Right. Simply put, and and Facebook is an opportunity to encourage greater diversity. I wrote a post. So after the Facebook changes, which I'm sure we'll discuss, I wrote a post about the changes themselves, and then today I put up a post about rethinking the definition of community. Because I, I, I realize that I think Facebook and media define it far too shallowly yes. Yes. and temporarily. Yes. Uh, where if you, if, you, if you get into a conversation with somebody, somehow you're in a community. No, you're not. A community is where you're joined together with people and membership around something common, a need, a concern, um, something. And uh, that's not what Facebook enables the world to make. It could be. And I think it's, I think it's a, a, you know, some place that they could go and neither media, you know, so, so then when you have those communities, then when you kind of identify with who you know and who you are, then you need to be able to meet people who aren't like you. Then you need to find the value in that. So is that's Facebook's coming change, which is to disconnect itself from publishers and, and really put stuff from <laughs> your friends and family in the feed. Not expressed that, that way. Okay. Tell me what they're doing. They're, um, they are emphasizing family. They are de-emphasizing external content in general. That doesn't mean that they will de-emphasize news, especially if your friends share it. Oh, if yeah, I'll see that if my I friends share, share it. Yeah. New York Times, you yeah. will still see that. Yeah, um, so I'm looking at my feed and I, you know, okay, and also if you follow a, a, a group that has news in it, you'll get a lot of news. But this is, a, so this is a news story, but it's shared by a friend. And in fact, what's nice about all of this is this is all friends now. And that is very different. It's not, <laughs> Lisa did, uh, uh, <laughs> I've always said that Lisa reminded me of a strong, powerful black woman. I, I think that's true. And apparently, so yeah. Google feels the same. So does Google. Same way. I don't know. Do you think that looks like Lisa? That's interesting. Anyway, I'm sorry. See, this is why Facebook's new thing is good. It's it's people we care about and friends and family instead of brands, right? You used to say that your feed was all me. And I noticed I'm not in it once now. So that's why you like it. Oh. I, did I unfollow you? <laughs> Oh, oh. Ooh. Ooh, this show is full of truth. Um, I'm trying to remember. No, I don't think Ooh. I. I don't think I. Uh, uh, you're right. Where's Ooh. Jeff in my feed? Have you not posted this week? Ouch! Of course I posted. Well, this I is interesting. I usually get a lot of yeah because you don't. Well, you know why I get a lot of you because you put your Twitter feed into this. Oh, I wonder if we cut that out. Oh, there's well, your Jeff. Cut that, there there you Jeff. Are. But That's yeah, this is Twitter. Thing. This is Twitter. Let me make that sure. That was Twitter. Okay. You're still. I'm not snoozing you or, <laughs> or anything like that. Um, I'm there twice in a row. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, this is why I think I get a lot of Jeff. Because when, when I do get Jeff, I get it, it comes in, in, <laughs> in spurts. spurts. Uh, so these are tweets. Yeah, that would be interesting. If, if, if Facebook were to do that, dip, deprecate auto posts it from Twitter, wouldn't that be interesting? Well, they did for a while, a couple of years ago, that they, they, they did, they discouraged it. And so I stopped uh, cross posting and I would try to post them both. It was pain in the butt. And then it apparently changed. And, and, you know, I will sometimes go into Facebook and kill something that I did on Twitter so I can do it appropriately to Facebook. You know it's, what it's I do? A lot of work. I use Dave Weiner's um, thing called mm -hmm. radio3.io. And so uh, it's a bookmarklet. And when I see a story that I want to, uh, it's really I'm bookmarking it for the shows. Shows. Right. So I, I use this, I bookmark it, and then it cross po it posts to Facebook and Twitter. But this, this part, the top part is the text, and then there's the link. And underneath it, both on Facebook and Twitter, you know how they do that, that snippet from the actual page. And this works quite I think quite well for me. And then it also goes to Pinboard, which is what uh, Karsten uses to build the rundowns. Uh, Karsten builds it. Oh, Pinboard. Okay. Pinboard. Well, I and I have Pinterest, a further. And I'm like, what? Yeah, we use Pinterest for all of our editorial. No, I have a further uh, thing, which actually is Karsten's idea. It worked quite well. I then use uh, Zapier, which is like if this, then that mm -hmm. on steroids, to put it in a. Google spreadsheet called Leo's links. And he 
can go to Leo's links. And it's the same format as the rundown. So he can just copy a line oh, and paste it in. Explains, this was his that's idea. That's playing stuff. Yeah. That's nice. Next time I'm so there, you do Carson, it by show? I want to see that. Uh, no. Uh, I just, uh, I don't actually so Carson make... brings order to your brain. Yes. I Well, it's the order it's in is chronological for me without reference to show. I used to tag it with the show, but unfortunately, Dave's uh, tool doesn't allow me to do tagging. So, Carson, you just go down from Leo's list and, and populate what you think is, is relevant. Yeah, he adds to... a lot of his own stuff, too, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like this. You actually, look at this, Jeff Jarvis. You tweeted what? something uh, I also uh, bookmarked, which is Joel on Software's, this is all related, Joel Spolsky, who uh, we yeah, interviewed I, on I, I, You poo-pooed it, I, but I yeah, liked I it. He's, his New Year's resolution did. was to give up reading Twitter and Facebook. <sighs> I said it on the show last week. That's the new, I don't have a TV. Well, you know, the time I didn't have a TV, actually, I was also happier. In fact, if I just would live underground with And no then when you got the TV, you only watched PBS. <laughs> I, I, anyway, I way, a correction, to, like, by the way, Obama did not compare Fox to CNN or MSNBC. He said... People who watch Fox News get a very different worldview than the people who listen to NPR. And that is absolutely that's, that's yeah. totally true. Yeah, my that's... my father watches Fox News all the time and he is his vision of the world is terrifying. Like he, same, he just same with every... my father. Yeah. It's American Carnage. Sad. It's the uh, American Carnage channel. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've, I've, one of the things, by the way, people say, oh, don't talk politics. This is not about politics anymore. It's about media. We may disagree about politics. I, I'm probably more conservative than either of you. That's not what we're talking about here. No. We're, we're talking about an aberration in, in the world, not about politics at all. I mean, I, you know, um, well, anyway, but that's what I'm saying. Anyway, let's talk about this. Joel Spolsky, you think that I like his birdcage liners because that's what we used to call the newspaper, right? And he says, uh, and he's, you know what his point is, Twitter and Facebook, Twitter more so than Facebook, but both are kind of designed to foster outrage and flames. And when you read them, he says, I feel bad. So is media. That's all the news media well, is designed to do. Well, that's why I don't watch sensationalistic television programming well, either. Well, no, right? in the news media, that's, I mean, there's, there's the front page, right? But then there's also like the feature section. And there's nothing puffier than the feature section. I mean, that's all like feel good well, stuff. Well, even there, even there, there's there's kind of what what bad things could happen to you. Um, that no, feels I'm, listen, more I'm in like the business. Nightly it's, news. I've done it. I was a tabloid. Yeah, and I'm not a fan of that uh, in any form. So when I when I feel bad because I you know when it, I tell my mom stop watching so much CNN because she she won't even fly anymore because she's so hmm. scared and. Um, I, I don't like that. So I kind of do kind of get those inputs out of my life. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Why is this wrong be, with that? Just Stacey, to be clear, a minute ago when I said, well, I'm in the business, I wasn't doing that in a haughty way. I was, I was, I was doing that you in a actually did it. way. He actually did it. No, no, yeah. I, I, I knew. It was like, <laughs> yeah. I, I also was in the business, but. Yeah, that's what I'm not saying. Not, that's why yeah, I but you weren't in the sensationalism like, business. I was that's not. I've that's what never I'm saying. Been yeah, in I was, you were in the business he too. He was in the sensationalism. I was in the bad side of the business. I worked for the New York Daily News doing page ones, and ah! I was on People magazine. <laughs> oh my gosh, your headline brain must be awesome! <laughs> Did you uh, write your own there, headlines? I got there after. Oh yeah, I got there though after the brilliant days of the Daily News. Um, mm. the, but I somewhere in my basement, I have a page one of Donald Trump on it that that, that talks about him being uh, it was the leading up the year's losers. He got mad. You know, it's funny though. What I realize is he gets mad, but he also loves it because he the most in important thing is the attention more than anything else here yes. are the here are the iconic daily news covers starting in 1919 it was a tabloid germans block signing of treaty uh ooh, loss and stop it's not getting really well actually that's getting a little sensationalistic look at the woman on the phone uh loss and stock collapse 10 billion that's uh japan at war with u.s Next photo. Oh, I have to. What is this? What is this? An ad? <laughs> it's over in Europe. Oh, wow. Maryland dead. That's sad. We carry on. That's a great cover. Uh, and a famous picture of John John saluting the president's casket, flag draped casket, as it went by in the funeral cortege in 1963. 
It was these, a, are, these are not their, their headlines that we remember. No. These are just big no. events and yeah. news. Well, maybe we haven't Ford, gotten... Ford to City. That's, that, now that's... that's now a, that was a good city. one. Now we're getting into the... Uh, this is Now we get in the 70s. We're getting in a little bit into the feisty. Uh, you're right, though. No, this is more straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, these are like sexism. hard, new, yeah, hard news. Yeah, you got to go to the New York, New York Post. And I, went, I just I Googled daily on. news, famous daily news covers, but I guess that was the wrong one. That's I didn't get the. This is from the Daily News. They don't want to really celebrate. <laughs> uh, the uh, yeah, see, you can't go to the Daily News for those. Oh, you know what you go for? <laughs> Google image search. <laughs> now, now you get the good stuff. Arrest weirdo in Tate murder. Is is that was it the news that said a uh, headless body found in topless no, that bar? Was post. That's the post. That was the post. That was the okay. post. <laughs> Oh gosh, some of these I don't want to look at. You know, they're too depressing. Fidel Gastro, <laughs> <laughs> dictator reportedly okay after stomach surgery. <laughs> this was a famous one. I never forget this one. Got him. So what was Let's what was your favorite best. headline that you wrote, Jeff Jarvis? Oh God, I can't remember. Think about I it. I can tell you. I can tell you my People Magazine headline that I like best. Yes. Shugu Guru Lyman Van Vliet cures tattered tennis toes with sheer stick to itiveness. Oh my God, I love wow. that. Wow. What does it even mean? There was a product called Shugu. Yes. To fix tennis. And they did a feature story on them, and I wrote the headline Shugu Guru Lyman Van Vliet cures tattered tennis toes with sheer stick to itiveness. Should use that for a, a, a announcer tryout. From now on, when I uh, when I am practicing my microphone technique, <laughs> I shall I shall proclaim Shugu Guru Lyman Van Vliet cures cures tat. You see, you can't even say it. Shugu <laughs> Guru Lyman Van Vliet cures tattered tennis toes with sheer stick to itiveness. Wow! Nice. By the way, here's the uh, uh, here's uh, the article. Uh, yeah, that's why I went to journalism school. <laughs> oh man, there it is. Oh, you found it. Shugu Guru Lyman Van Vliet cures tattered tennis toes with sheer stick-to-itiveness. That is a great I headline. I thought it was tennis toes. Mm. How Some did uh, screwed that up? How did Sally Chorus, the person who wrote that article, feel about your headline? I have no idea. Well, because because the thing was, she was the reporter, right? So I was the writer. So that's, that's the important to people. Uh, when you, and I think it's even more important in this day and age when people don't read articles, they just share them because of the headline. The headline is often written by a, another person, right? Not anymore. No? Not in Well, blogs. in a magazine, yes. No, it was back in, in a, the day. Not even, yes, yeah, in no, a, not, but yeah. Newspapers and day. magazines, I think headline writers are still separate, right? Um, um, in print? Digitally, no. No? So at Fortune, if you're doing, someone will do your headline, you, you're, you're, Every writer has to come up with three headlines, and then Ooh. many of them gets taken out. But it yeah, because I mean, it, I'm not kidding. The headline is the most important part of the whole article from the point of view of sh social sharing. Yeah, I did. Well, I, I, we I did also a had a person who did our. They would actually write the tweets. They, really? Fortune had like two social media people who wow. would. Oh, so. Strange. The process was whack, um, but they would actually write the tweets and write Facebook they stuff. They, they, the reason it was whack is because they had like a timeline. So like if you had breaking news, they would stick it in the timeline, but then it wouldn't get tweeted out for like <laughs> hours. So that just. They had I mean, a queue. Yeah, they had a queue and they, they we had rules about what got tweeted when and how fast it, it was ridiculous. So, it did not work. Jeff, you wrote a medium article on uh, what you think about the changes. Let's let's uh, let's let's break this down. You say, yes, I'm worried. Uh, Zuckerberg says he's going to prioritize posts that spark conversations and meaningful interactions between people. That doesn't necessarily mean what the headline said, which is going to deprecate news articles. No, it, it, it actually doesn't. Yeah. So what is he going to do? They believe they they they've bought the research internal and external that sitting and staring passively at content, including especially videos, is where they think of the, you know here they had all these publishers pivot to video, yeah. watching yeah. passively watching video, 
um, that they think that's bad for you. So they think that that interaction with your friends is good for you. We read that. We read that uh, study from Facebook when mm -hmm. it, when it came out a few weeks ago. Uh, it, you know, it was a little self-serving. They said it's bad for you to just passively consume content. It's good for you to share. And this is the this is in effect Mark putting this into action. But by the way, I also saw uh, that Facebook's engagement numbers have been going down for two years. So this is also yeah. There's an argument that this is this is a long play yeah. to try to fix the experience and have a happier experience. I even read somebody said this is the beginning of the end for Facebook. Oh. Well, that's a wonderful headline. Everyone would click on that, no matter was, what it well, said. Well, I think it was, <laughs> let me see if it was in the Monday. Yeah. Let me see. This is Frederick uh, Falou writing in the Monday. Oh, yeah, well, that's Frederick. Yeah. Um, I think he said this is the beginning of the end. Maybe he, he uh, oh, was it him or somebody else? Somebody else said that. Um <laughs> It's a good, it's a good article and it's clear. It is not. Uh, it is not a, uh, a sensationalist piece by any means. None of the what, what I didn't write. Here's here's the core problem I learned in conversations that I've had through my CUNY gig with Facebook people. Facebook had two giant buckets of content. One was social content, the stuff that they are now going to promote. That was your friend talking to your friends and your families and your cats. And the other was everything else, so-called public content. And the problem was that quality. New York Times, Washington Post twit, whatever, got thrown in with crap. And in the view of Facebook, it was all just public content. And I think that's what got them in trouble. I think that's what enabled people to game it and for the crap to rise so much and for the quality not to. And, um, and, and, and because they didn't want to do something that neither Google nor Facebook wanted to do, which was to judge quality. Google has now said, as we've talked on the show many, many times, Ben Gomes, the head of search engineering, now says in search ranking they will judge quality, authority, reliability. Facebook's got to deal with that devil and figure it out. So in a way, what I said in the piece is that I fear that they're going to throw out the journalistic baby with the trolley bathwater. That by trying to get rid of the stuff that's getting them in trouble, they get rid of a lot of good stuff. And my hope is, and I still have hope that they'll do this, is that they can bring back in some of the good stuff and still promote that and we'll see. I kind of agree with you that this is the wrong thing to do is to react to what got them in trouble. The right thing to do would be to react to falling engagement, uh, a lack of interest among people under 25. That's going to be a problem in the long run. Uh, and, and how Facebook makes people feel. I mean, if they have, if they apparently do research, that shows that certain kinds of content and passive consumption make people feel bad. All of that's the right thing to react to. Saying, oh, we're in trouble because of fake news is the wrong thing to react to, I think. Which is why I wrote the second post that I wrote today, and I'm not trying to get myself more clicks. Um, but <laughs> but um, if you define community merely as conversation, that's too thin and shallow, and that's what gets us in trouble. That's where the crap is. That's oh, what I'm sure Facebook might do. <laughs> Instead, so Facebook said they want to spark conversations and meaning, meaningful interactions between people. I say I'd prefer them to be meaningful, lasting, and trusting interactions among people, plural. Imagine a Facebook where they enable you to start your own Rotary Club to improve your community, or your own church, or your own AA, uh, or your own classroom, or your own well, can't you do uh, that with mutual support now? society? It's it kind of can a little bit, but it's not designed for that, right? It's designed for, I share this and we talk about it. And media likes that and Facebook likes that, but that's not real community. What do people and if like? Facebook means it. What do, what do its customers want? Well, I, I look at Meetup as an example, right? And I think Scott Heiferman built very quietly built something that had great power in saying that people still want to get together around common interests and not yell at each other and 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 do things together. And I and, and there's a lot of gnashing of teeth that since our parents got old, the Rotary Clubs and the Kiwanis Clubs and the bowling leagues and all that have gone away. And I think there's an opportunity for Facebook to bring some of that back as Meetup is done in person. But Meetup uh, we'll is, about, is about meat space. It as, is. It's as is person. the Rotary Club. Can you do that kind of meaningful engagement online with people or does it have to be in a real world environment? No, I, I don't think I, it has to be. No. Go ahead, Stacey. I think... So I think very successful online communities can emerge, but they're usually highly curated. 
And they're usually built organically around some sort of either content that people are excited about. Like I've think about like IRC or the boards I used to frequent or now, you know, even comments on certain blogs, you know, there a community actually does build up there. Is Reddit and, an example of what you might imagine? The parts no. of Reddit can be. So, I mean, you can't just say all of Reddit, right? There are supportive, lovely parts of Reddit. Yeah, and you get to uh, choose as a Reddit user, you get to choose where you go on Reddit. Obviously, there's bad places on Reddit, but... But, like, if... What was her name? Uh, uh, blog Blogus? Was that her name? Uh I can't remember at your age. I can't remember mine. I don't know what you're talking about. No, uh, hold on. Sounds like how many syllables? I think it's the blogus. It is the blogus. Okay. Oh, the blog S. Yes. Yes. The blog S. Yes. Okay. So that's a good example. Yes. So she came online with a point of view and she manages to find a real community that that supported her and that supported each other. Well, that's kind of so, old school blogging, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, that's just that's an okay. example from the past. So I just, that's what I look for. And I, I think like to get there though, you do have to have a highly curated, motivated people. Even think about something like the toast. That was an amazing community for three years. That was awesome. Well, and that's part of the problem, and we see that happen in on Reddit. We see it happen on Facebook. Is that there's something corrosive about being on the internet? People try to game you. We get trolls. You have to constantly, massively curate it. And even then, look what happened to Dig. Uh, the gaming practically kill. Well, did kill it. I'm sorry, did kill it. Uh, so there's something corrosive about being on the internet, isn't there? <laughs> Yes, because it's easier to, like, the barrier to trolling is so much lower, right? I mean, there's always been people who think it's fun to right. send hate mail to people and all that stuff. It's just much easier now. When you have a meet space meeting, if somebody's acting like a jerk, yeah, you, know, they pu you push them out. And it doesn't happen that often, frankly. Well, And you have more signals to give. You you have more, you know, it's like a cocktail party, except without the booze, you know. Um, it's hard to do an internet there to accomplish things. It's hard to do an internet community, and I have been on many and watched them all decline bit by bit. Like the well, it started for me with the well. Well, what uh, was the well? What I'm trying to say is this, Leo: the well was built around having a community, as if community was kind of a generic, as opposed to well, saying the, the well was more like Reddit. Built around it, community no, right? The well town. had um, groups. Yeah, and so like if you were a deadhead and you uh, you went to the deadhead group on the well. I think it had groups, or maybe you would just, I can't remember how that worked, but it was a it was a wonderful community, but just, it was like Usenet before it. Uh, you'd follow these news groups, but in, almost inevitably, it would descend into flame wars. Oh, what I'm saying is, here's what I'm trying to say. Those were built around interests or content. Yes, that's correct. As opposed to being built around a, a, a an accomplishment or a cause. A Rotary Club existed to make the town better. A union exists to get us our rights. A political movement exists to get something done. AA exists to give support to people. The problem is that I think that both media and Facebook think too highly of content, of this notion that, oh, community is that which gathers around what we do. No, community is gathers around people's needs and their lives. And serving those needs and coming up with the mechanisms to serve those needs. I think we have to turn around our definition. That's why I'm saying our entire definition of community, I think, is too shallow. Are we trying to take meat space and shoehorn it into the internet? Oh, uh, you could accuse me of doing exactly that, but I think that there, you know, I saw somebody's post today and I forget where it was, somewhere on Facebook. Somebody said, hey, wherever you are, join your town's Facebook group because, yeah. wow, you learn things about that and it's yeah. great and it's people who care about the same things you care about and da, 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 da. No, I think it's possible. I think it's hard. It doesn't have to be physically. That's one of the things I liked about the internet is, is that, Interest groups didn't have to be ge geographically proximate. That you could have a well, chess club that's all over the world instead of a chess club that's in Petaluma. But if you're trying to make the world a better place, like some of Jeff's examples, it becomes very hard not to do that locally. So that I don't think you you can do a lot of things entirely online. I think to fulfill some basic human needs for most people 
getting you away from your computer is probably going to be better and having a meat space counterpart. I hate so I spent space. I've been I reading this book called uh, The Politics of Mass Society. And at a higher level, by, by, by William Kornhauser in 1959, all I could get was a very used copy. Um, because I, I'm very interested right now in this notion of mass society. And so, so Stacey, you're right, I think, that local is very powerful. But, but when you're a, you know, a, a transsexual teenager, local may be gathering 100 people from around the world yes. to feel you have enough to have a community. So local can, local can now gather new definitions. But in either case, what Kornhauser says is that when you have a paucity of independent groups, I'm quoting him, then people are more subject to manipulation and mobilization. So in a pluralist, in a proper, good, pluralist and diverse society, he says, and I'm quoting, the population is unavailable for such manipulation in that people possess multiple commitments to diverse and autonomous groups, to communities. When people are divorced from their communities and work, they feel free to reunite in new ways, that is to be feed for trolls. That's that's what really struck me in, in this discussion, that the more we have more connections to people, and the, and the great thing here is that, because the problem is when you, when you don't have a community you define yourself with, you're just part of an anonymous mass. But when you do define yourself with a community, you also define yourself as an individual. That's the great, wonderful paradox about communities, that by joining a community, I also establish my own identity as a person. And that a community that is open to many communities and that allows and values those stronger connections among those communities is going to be a more pluralist and diverse society. A society where we are lumped together is vulnerable to totalitarians. And I apologize for that faux academic moment there. But that's 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 what fascinated me about this whole discussion around Facebook was, was to rethink the value of these ties. Um, and, and David Weinberger would argue that weak ties do add up to something strong, and I agree with that, and I've, and I've agreed with that for a long time, but that's not sufficient. End of lecture. So I was like, that was very deep. Is, is this going to be enough to say, is this going to be enough to save Facebook? And what do publishers do going forward? So there's, you know, there's two things going on. So is this enough to face, save Facebook? But also publishers are freaking out because they used, they, Live by mm -hmm. the sword, die by the sword. Live by Facebook. Now they're afraid they're going to die by Facebook. Yeah, and as I say in my piece, I fully you know, confess, I drove people to do more on Facebook, as did Facebook themselves. And people said to me all along, we're going to get the rug pulled out from underneath us. And I think I said that. Where's the rug? Oh, you, you and others as well, yes. Yeah, but I noticed um, we didn't, you know, there was a lot of uh, interest perhaps in going uh, all along. I've seen this every time. You know, we've been doing this now 12 years, mm -hmm. more than that. 13 years mm -hmm. and uh and you know there there was a whole thing oh we should do more facebook video oh we should do more youtube video you should why why do you distribute anywhere but youtube why don't you just put it all on youtube and i kind of held the line and i'm kind of glad i did yeah, you're that. right you're right um the problem and i don't think it's malevolent on facebook's part i think that 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 they just come along and try something that doesn't work and they try the next thing and oops the Collateral damage is the collateral damage. Yeah, no, I think you're um, right. I, I absolutely agree with you on that. But that doesn't that doesn't defend it. I, I, I as I do say in my in my first piece, I think that Facebook, whether it wanted it or not, became the key distributor of news and information in society, and it cannot abrogate that responsibility. Why it has not? To figure out how to carry out that responsibility. Their only interest at this point is as their only interest ever has been to be a profitable corporation. Yeah, but then you've got Zuckerberg there saying he wants to build a better Facebook, saying he wants to build a better society, saying that's, he wants to build around communities. That's good for then, the corporate P, pub, public well, relations. That's good also, for a company has to have some vision, I think. Google still has a vision. Zuckerberg's vision was to, and make that it, people are happier so when they connect, right? That's Yeah, it. his yes. vision is just yes. letting people in the world connect. And I don't think there's anything to do with news with regard to that. And I actually don't know if I want Facebook to be my arbiter of news. And Were you what okay I if Facebook just said no more news? Stop. Yeah. Except, like, wow. does that mean even if friends? I post a news article? Yeah, exactly. No. Okay, yeah, then I'm fine with that. Yeah. I don't the get New York my Times has Facebook. no role there. Not unless I explicitly make them my buddy. Wow. Right? I. Th this is the funny thing, Jeff. If you ask normal people, that's what they assume Facebook is. Yes, yes. You, right. you have a good they, don't, they don't think it's how I file. Although we also know 
almost half of America gets its news from Facebook <laughs> solely. So what is the social responsibility Facebook thus has? That's the question. They should put a big banner that says, don't get your news here, kids. Go to Wikipedia. Their, their big responsibility <laughs> is probably transparency about the data they're collecting, transparency about how they're manipulating what they show you. I mean, that's that's their ethical job. It's not it's not to show us news. I agree with you on that. What, let me ask you better. another question. I agree with you on that. Stacey, let me ask you another way, Dan. Um do television networks have a responsibility to help inform the public? Was that is that a proper yeah, responsibility? Yeah, they do because still? they are using public airwaves. What about cable? What about cable systems? Do they have no, responsibility? No, that's Should entertainment cable, only. Cable say I'm going to get rid of I'm going to get rid of CNN and Fox. It just causes too much trouble, says Comcast. I just screw it. I'm going to get rid of it. That's fine. Would, would they be abrogating their public responsibility? No, no. Might be a good thing. Actually, yeah. Oof. I'm kind of like, hey. What would oh, happen if that happened? Oh, jeez. Our conversations <laughs> and news all, might get better. The all news channels. Are, if you're going to point to one thing wrong with this country, it's the 24-hour news cycle created by these all-news channels. Yeah. I would submit, no matter yeah. what That's Facebook does, is de minimis. Yes. What Facebook does is de minimis compared to what 24-hour news channels have done. And I would also argue that if you eliminated those things, not that that's going to happen, you would also create a better environment for, for support news. for local news. Yes, for like news. true news, for real news, for your newspaper. Oh my! Or it could be delivered via the internet. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, there'd be a market for news. Go to you want news? Go to go, yeah. We have a really good system for delivering news called the internet. TV is not a good system for delivering news. It never ever has been. Is the internet a good system for delivering news? Yes. It's a great system. It's a good system as long as you are able to critically read things and understand where they well, came that's from. that's up to you. You have to, yes. But so I'm sorry, if you're not able to, to do that. People. Yeah, right. That's well, not. Well, no, there's, there's an entire class of people who are not educated in this because they've never had to be educated in this. Well, and because our schools haven't trained people. It's more than that. And I actually, this I'm stealing this from Michael Scott in Fire and Fury. People don't care about politics at all. This isn't just politics. This is understanding things like vaccines are good. That's seen as I mean, that's seen as <laughs> politics. But so I'll uh, yeah, you're right. It's more than politics. But that's seen. That's uh, include that in the umbrella. People don't care about the weighty issues of the day. They care about what am I going to have for dinner? How am I going to be well, able? Yes, is my kid okay, going to get sick? They care about that stuff. That's fine and that's lovely, but you still have to have a class of people who make arguments to set policies to get people yes. the stuff they want yeah, for well, dinner. Those, that's what it's so, always been that way, right? There's always been an elite. News. Yeah, well, let the elite worry it's, about it. It's not even that elite. I no, mean, I know. it can be. I know, but that's what they call them. <laughs> the East Coast elites and all of that. <laughs> Happy birthday, Betty White. She was born on this day in 1922. She's 96 years old. And I got that out of Reddit. So there. She's <laughs> older than the queen. She's I older than the that. queen. Her she reign is, is our queen. Her reign is longer than the queen. <laughs> queen Betty. Queen Betty. Uh, big changes from Google Fi. I'm curious what you think about this. It, it's billed as Google Fi. Data is now free, but it's not exactly. No one's no one's fully unlimited or fully free, but it, it you you up to sixty, but you max out at sixty bucks, which is which is well sixty bucks plus the twenty bucks for data, data for video. Data. You'd have to all you have to use. Yeah, yeah. So um, I uh, this is great. I'm I'm a Google Fi subscriber. I think you are as well, right? Yes. Yes. Um, what this means is that we will not pay more than eighty dollars a line, no matter how much data we use. They are. They do say after after 15 gigabytes in a month, they'll slow you down unless you want to Which is pay. a lot. Yeah, that's that's this is really puts them in line with the other carriers, frankly, except that they're explicit, whereas the other carriers say unlimited data. Here's the other big change, Leo. Used to be, and it was it was a it was a minor point, but you used to pay in advance and they would basically kind of refund you yes. uh what you didn't spend. Now now they're going to the sensible ways. You'll you'll pay for what you use as you go. Gig at a time. Nice. And you don't pay for anything you don't use so if you just used voice and zero zero gig it would be twenty dollars a month that's i use base. my phone for travel so there are months go by when all i pay is for the line yeah, yeah. they call it bill protection which is probably an accurate way to put it after yeah. after uh, bill protection kicks in at six gigabytes after that data is free for the rest of your billing cycle 
And after 15 gigabytes, you'll be slowed down a little bit. Unless, and you can, apparently, you can opt in to pay, continue to pay $10 a gigabyte and not be slowed down. No, I guess what happens after 15, you can say, no, I'll pay for it now. I don't know. I'll have to look. Oh, you can? It. Yeah, there's a, yeah, if you don't want to be slowed down, use a way not to do that. Oh, there is. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. I don't know if this makes sense. But it's $10 a gigabyte? That's Jesus. what they've always charged, yeah. I know, but charged. that's that's ridiculous. I think it's a good Sorry. deal. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Frankly. Let me just look at my plan. I keep debating going ahead and fully switching over to five. Edit I'm day. on a Google phone anyway. I'm stubborn about my AT&T grandfathered unlimited account. Just I want to stick it to him by keeping it. Yeah. This will be do you, uh, rolling out. Do you leave out. Netflix running in the background all the time? <laughs> <laughs> just, just to get you. This will be just rolling out to five customers uh, nationwide over the next few days. I got my email already. Did you? Nice. Yeah. Still, so Stacy, when I when I download a um, an Audible book and it goes warning, warning, you could be using data. I think, ha 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 ha, you know nothing. <laughs> I do not care. I know. I love those data, warnings. Data. I can ignore them. Ten, of them. 10 megs for a book. Yes, I got my email too. An important update to your Project 5 plan. Introducing bill protection. Data when you need it and savings when you don't. Oh, they sound just like a carrier now. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's all right. That's all right, Google. That's good. I think this is good. Yeah, if you don't make money, you know. <laughs> well, they don't, do they, I mean, is Fi even a profit center for Google? I wonder. Oh, I don't think so. Well, why hasn't Ruth reselling. come and cut it? They're yeah. reselling data. I mean, that's why their their gigabyte costs are so high. If Google had its druthers, I'm sure it could figure out how to drop that in a heartbeat. By the way, if you have multiple members on your plan, it's different. So they have a, a little spreadsheet for you <laughs> showing for the number of people who use it, et cetera, et cetera. This was always the like my nightmare days when carriers would change their plans because oh. you had to like explain... <laughs> You start here, and if you add more people, this happens. And if you go yeah. over, it's ridiculous. I think Google Fi is still probably the simplest, and you know, mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, and I and I really like it. I'm very happy with it. Uh, does it work internationally? Oh, yeah, very well. Oh yeah, it does. You know where it doesn't it does. work? So they say we're working in most countries. I think it's 190 countries. I found one that doesn't work in because I was there, in Monaco. Really? Yeah, but the good news is France is a mile away, so <laughs> take a walk, <laughs> use the phone, and then come back to Monaco. Monaco actually is less than a mile away. There's nowhere you can go in Monaco that France is more than, a, I think, a kilometer away. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so it's okay. I guess they decided not to do the deal with Monaco Telecom or whatever. <laughs> Prince maybe, Com. maybe they had... If you okay. have a Google Cast device, actually... I had them all over the house, right? Uh, Google mm. Home, Google Chromecast, Audio, Google AudioCast. Um, this was a first discovered by a Chinese, uh, very popular Chinese uh, uh, router manufacturer called TP-Link. But now others are saying, yeah, it happens to us too. It, will, it couldn't actually cause your Wi-Fi to drop out periodically. And this was happening to me. Oh. Uh, so what happens is these devices, these Google devices... Google says they're fixing this tomorrow. These Google devices, when they wake up from sleep, they have a stay awake thing. Uh, they start, they dump data on the network or something and it overloads the Wi-Fi router and it goes, <laughs> and it dies for a while and then it comes back. So I thought, well, I wonder if this is what's happening to me. So I disconnected everything. I have many, many Google Assistant, Google <laughs> Must Home Must have devices. taken about an hour <laughs> to find them. Unplugged them all. The Chromecasts are hard to find because they're little and they're stuck yeah. behind things. I think I know I got them all because I then used a Wi-Fi uh, um, manager to look and see if I could see any signals. Couldn't. The only thing I sad about is I had to unplug my NVIDIA Shield TV because it has a built-in Chromecast. Lo and behold, my data hasn't dropped in 48 hours. So they're going to fix this. Do they have they're to? They're fixing uh, they're, it tomorrow. I hope they fix it. Through every one of those devices or through Yeah, they'll have to Google patch all their devices, they, basically. They patch all their devices. It's it's they're I think they're using UDP, which yes, they is are. one of the issues. It has no so congestion just, protection. Yeah, so not a TCP fan. Um well you, you usually just, want UDP for streaming because UDP is yes. more efficient on streaming because there's no ACK 
Um, but the lack of congestion protection is, I think, what's going on here. Anyway, I don't know what they'll do to fix it. The first part, according to uh, VentureBeat, the first part of the fix is a patch to Google Play services that run on Android phones. <laughs> huh? And then it says it's, uh, it's unclear if an update for home devices and other cast-enabled hardware will be necessary. Maybe the app, the Google Home app that you're running on your phone... I don't controls know. the uh, talks to the device and tells it to yeah. go to sleep. This or is, manages this is the something. Flow? This is your beat because this is a Stacy. Because this is an Stacey, IOT. Yeah. Go solve this. No, but this is an we, IOT device causing havoc in the home. We talked about it on the show. We explained what was happening. We didn't have the data this morning when we recorded about when the patch was coming up, but we did talk yeah, about well, why it was out. happening. Yeah. In fact, I didn't know about this either. Um, so, so that's good. That's good news. I hope that uh, I hope it works. I'm not going to plug my Google Homes in for a while. You know, I didn't have this problem with my Google Homes, but, you know, maybe it's also either. a function Some of people. the type of routers. Yeah, but it you're is. you're using the Eros. Are you using Eros? Eros and Plumes both were affected. Plume more so than anybody. But the huh. interesting thing is, apparently, some have said it also happens with Google Wi-Fi. Which I have. Their own Kevin. router. Yeah, Kevin... Kevin said he didn't have an issue with the google wi-fi but it's one of those issues you might not notice because it's a brief dropout here's where you'll notice if you're streaming video the video will stop and then it'll pause it won't rebuffer it'll pause because it's not getting anything and then it'll come back yeah we i mean who knows Let's let's see if you notice me go out during the middle of the show, because then you'll be. Yeah, like, well, that's oh. a good point. You've that's never right. you, that's never happened. Although we do have people we talk to who do that does periodically happen. They just stop and then they come back. Huh. So. In certain see, situations, on the, on the a bug. A good point here. What's that? When when you plug them all back in, they're all going to get patches. There's going to be a flood of data. Yeah, plug them in at night, <laughs> late at night. Like the middle of the night. In certain situations, a bug, this is Google, a bug in the cast software on Android phones. Oh, so they're saying it's the phones may incorrectly send a large amount of network traffic, which can slow down or temporarily impact Wi-Fi networks. The specific impact of the network will vary depending on the router. People with an Android phone and a Chromecast built-in device, such as a Chromecast or Google Home device on the same Wi-Fi network may experience this issue. You know, I feel bad. I'm the only one in the family with an Android phone. So you know what I'm gonna do? Messing up your network. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn off my phone. I have a, a Note 8 running all the time in a NetPixel 2 XL. Maybe if you're I turn, gonna turn off, off your phone, your Facebook, your Twitter, your TV, and you're gonna be just so happy. Do you see the new so thing? So centered. Was an article in the New York Times. If you Please. really want to get over your phone addiction, make your phone black and white. And you know what? It's true. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a nightmare. So it's in display on the iPhone. It's a little hard to do on an Android. On the iPhone, it's in display accommodations. This is These are the bright and brilliant colors you would get normally on an iPhone. But if you turn on color filters, you can choose grayscale. And then, oh, my God. It's, it's a, a communist it's uh, a, iPhone. It's a Stalinist it's iPhone. It's what they have in North Korea, yeah. And I have to say, it's true. It really, when you look at your photos, ugly. When you look at Instagram or Facebook, ugly. It's so depressing. That's the point. You can do it on an Android phone. If you go into developer options, you have to tweak around with the developer options. <laughs> but what you do realize is when you turn the black and white off, how compelling these are. Like, so, Pretty. It's a glowing screen. You could just put it in front of a baby and watch. Yes. I mean, it's like a just mob like, mobile. They are, you're like, woo. And they're like, oh. Did you I have wanted. a mobile for your daughter when she was little? I think so. I had whatever whatever the Babies R Us catalog told you to go get. <laughs> I went the, and got. All the rage when, when Abby and Henry were little, and I don't think it helped, was black and white mobiles. Oh yes, that's Remember right. That? I forgot. That's right. Exactly. Same. Same. I don't yes. see them yes. anymore. <laughs> By contrast, because they weren't into color. That's true. Babies can't see color at first. I think. Yeah. I don't know. So a baby would like the Stalinist iPhone. No, the baby. Well, no, the baby just likes the iPhone. <laughs> Babies love that. Is that you true? They that. just they like gravitate. 
Oh, yeah. If you stick a phone in front of a baby, they'll just most of them after like six months, they know how to turn it on. Wow. I mean, it's crazy. You know, what's terrible is candy crush in black and white. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> you can't. It's horrible. You can't play it. Why? Why? See, I think this is to make it so you don't waste time on your phone. It is. Your phone still functions in every way. You but just don't enjoy you it. Just don't enjoy it. <laughs> I'm like, it's like fat free ice cream. Yeah, Ugh, Halo yeah, top. Yeah. <laughs> Google has created Google had so much is having so much trouble filling IT jobs that they've created a free certificate program on Coursera. So if you uh, don't have any IT experience, but you want to get an entry level support job, it might take you eight to twelve months. You can take a free course on Coursera, the big MOOC, the big MOOC, and uh, you can get a, a, an IT job. Natalie Van Cleef Conley, former head of Google's tech support program, was having trouble finding IT support specialists, so she spearheaded this certificate program. It's also part of uh, Google doing its bit to help Americans get skills in a changing economy. So, so are these full-time jobs? Are they going to be... Well, it doesn't guarantee you a job. It's just you, you get the skills. I guess you get a certificate. They do point out, though, uh, they don't require a college degree. Uh, but the problem getting a job is you need experience. So this will, this will substitute, in some cases, for experience. The median annual wage for a computer network support specialist, $62,670. Computer user support specialist, $52,160. So good, they're good jobs. So do you think we'll ever get to the point where we've trained too many people in computer science? No, because that's like saying you've trained too many people to read. Eventually, you're going to have to know all of this stuff just to function in the world. Or you're going to have to have an understanding of this stuff to function in the world. It certainly wouldn't hurt. Have there been gluts before in professions? Well, oh, you know, yeah. lawyers, <laughs> MBAs. <laughs> Journalists. Yeah. <laughs> there are too many journalists now. Sorry, sorry, Jeff. Ours still get jobs. Ours still get jobs. Uh, yeah, there have been. Yeah, think about all the seamstresses out there. Man, what are they doing? Uh, Buggy whip makers. Farming. This is why we, I mean, I, I, we, I commissioned a study at my center at CUNY in the job skills needed in the field so that we can be training people for the right skills. There's whole new job titles in journalism, like product development, never existed. Yeah. Right? Uh, audience development, never existed. Commerce is now a, a growing skill. Uh, so these are these are new things that we need to train people for. Well. Wait, commerce? Journalists as a, as make a terrible revenue stream. salespeople. Well, no, it's not. The, actually, the, here's the interesting thing. They and it's a, well, it's it's a form of native content, is what it is. Ah! Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. But um, wire cutter. That's a good yeah. example. They monetize. So, in a they do affiliate, in a nice don't they? Do way. they do yeah. something yeah. fancy? Yeah, they do. But that's the that's the commerce. That's how you make the money. So you are making is there content like a that is. Is there a business that needs to happen or a relationship that happens with affiliate links or do you just, I don't know how this works. Well, both, Stacey. I've been learning this because we have the best people we have into the room to figure this out. And and fascinating, a few interesting things about this. Well, oh, you got me started. Um, is that it is another revenue stream. And the people who are doing this, like New York Magazine, uh, Gizmodo Media, Perch, there's a bunch of companies that are doing this and doing this well. Um, they actually find it kind of freeing because they have to maintain the trust of the audience. If Gizmodo tells right. you this is the best deal and it's not, you're going to say, screw you the next time. So trust matters. They also find themselves freed from having to go after every damned advertising RFP. But you do have to create content that becomes a home for this. One of the best selling things on Business Insider, I love this, at least in the beginning when they started this, was wallets, a place for your money. And what they would do is do, you know, 10 best wallets. What's the best wallet? Look at wallets. And they put links on that. there to sell the wallets. And I bought a whole bunch of and wallets then, after that. <laughs> you would because you're I the susceptible sucked, man. I was suckered in by that. And then when they find one's really selling, Leo's bought 10 of them, then they call the manufacturer and say, let's let's do a deal directly and not do this through Amazon. And we'll, you know we'll what's do it funny? Way. You don't see wallet ads anymore. You used to see them all the time. 
Well, it's like it's like the um, that that suitcase that's advertised all the time on TV now. Um, oh, you know, you've seen it. No. Oh, I don't. Seen it. Oh, I, I literally bag? don't have a TV. The away, away bag. The away. Oh yeah, they away. used to be a sponsor here, and then they decided, they were, oh, this is what happened. By the way, every one of our yeah, sponsors, they get great success here, and then they say, now we can advertise in, in real media. Yeah, volume, uh, volume. But That's I think cover. we do a better job for them, you do. and we're you do. more efficient for them. But everybody wants to be big time. It's funny because I always used to complain about that among new media people is like, they're all trying to get on TV. Like you made it. If you could take right. that podcast and get on TV, that was like true. Mark advertisers on too. TV now. Um, and, uh, but, and yeah, it's true for advertisers. It turns out who knew. But Stacy, the other lesson from this is that uh, you'd like to get away from Amazon. Cause there's a, you know, there's a cap on what the affiliate fees are and so on and so forth, but the consumers love buying through Amazon. So just as we were stuck with Google for, um, advertising and with Facebook for audience, we're going to be stuck with Amazon for commerce. Affiliates. Okay. Yep. But there's a, there's a revenue it. stream there. So I don't you know. should, why, why don't you, wait a second, it's Stacey's business. Why don't, so I remember way back when there was a trio blog. Remember the old trio, my favorite yes. phone in the mm -hmm. old days? Yes. And there was a guy who did a trio blog and yes. he started just saying, well, here I'll sell cases and stuff. It became a major business for a good amount of time where he sold both trios and accessories. So Stacy, for you, is there a business in actually becoming an affiliate e-commerce recommended site for a wire cutter for IoT? So there is, um, but, but I'm lazy. But, okay, so here's the <laughs> challenge. Very, in a nutshell, my business runs on 90% of my audience are not that interested in my ads, but the 10% of my audience that are are mm -hmm. highly valuable to my advertisers. Yes. So yes. that works out really well for me. So that's where I'm trying to stay. And with, affiliate with, ads takes up a lot of, it It takes time to get going. And what if you did a separate, what if you did a separate sub brand that was Stacy's IOT picks? Cause I'm and you could also mean, buy them just like wire cutter. Yeah, but I trust you on IoT. I know you've tested the hell out of them. I know you. I know what your husband's complained about. I know, right? So I would, I would, if I wanted to buy IoT stuff, I would come straight to you, buy it through you. Yeah, there's a conflict of interest, but you're going to be very clear about that. And you're going to maintain your trust in your brand, and I and I trust you for that. Um, I'm telling you, there's an opportunity. for No, you here. Th there is an opportunity. It just means that I have to write. Right now, we don't do a lot of written reviews. So, and what I, it's are a the huge ethical considerations it was uh, of affiliate links. Well, you'll promote no, the stuff that sells. You'll rather tell than the people, best. right? Yeah. You'll, and I, instead that of doing esoteric long. things, you know, right. that you nobody want, really cares about. Yeah. Cause you're going to make more money on something that a hundred people will buy than something five people will buy. But so there's pressures, but you know, all advertising has it's always potentially yeah. some pressures. You just no. have to resist them and say, no, I'm going to continue to do the editorial that I do. And you do have to disclose, don't you? I mean, there there, there have been companies. Yes. Pinterest got in a lot of trouble when people realized that they were putting associate links on Pinterest links. Of course, it was other people's I'm telling accounts. telling you, Stacey. I'm telling you. No, you're not. I, want, I, want it is I, I actually yeah. think it's a really nice kind of monetization. We've done a little bit. I think it is, too. Because... Uh, it doesn't. Yeah, you, Leo, for God's sakes, what am I doing? Look at right. You should be selling stuff. <laughs> we, so we did a couple of things. One, we at, we suggested that people use our link when they buy stuff on Amazon. We just said, hey, if you just go start doing Amazon shopping through this link, then we'll get a percentage of everything you buy, and it's a painless way for you to donate, no matter what they buy. Right. right. And I don't know if we still do that. And then I think for I can't remember, but I think sometimes. I have personally on my blog. I don't know if we, Twit's done it. We've had affiliate links. I don't. Well, maybe not on products that we, you know, in a in an article about a product. The problem is most of our content is is audio and video, which has no links at all. Right. Well, but again, I'll say the same thing to you. I just said to Stacy, if there were a Twit shop brand, we are not selling T-shirts. That's fine. That's 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 de minimus. Yeah, no but kidding. That <laughs> you don't you make know, any money on review, merch. I see what you and Padre and and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, are, I always thought about are, that. Are, We'd sell yeah. like Leo's computer. Yeah. I put, you know, Kim Commando does this. I put together the best computer with everything I like and you can buy yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I Nothing do I don't. Yeah, I don't want to do that. 
Yeah, uh, we Kevin and I have talked about it. I feel it. like that's a little skeezy, or at least appears to be. It's not skeezy, but appears to be skeezy. Because you it's wouldn't go in a skeezy though. way. Because Gizmodo, be like, for example, service. they show you all the, like, 300,000 people have clicked on this link, um, which I actually think is really cool um, when they have their affiliate links. But I'm also worried that, like, if I did it, there'd be, like, four people have clicked on this link. And I'd be like, woohoo! And my audience would be like, why are we here? <laughs> yeah. But I could sell Stacy's house or Kevin's house, but everything's so use case specific, it doesn't yeah. seem like a good I idea. I like our model. I like your model. I like uh, clearly identified interstitial ads that people know this is an ad. We, you know, there's some hand curation, you know, of the content and the people and, you know, so that we don't advertise stuff that you, it's junk. I mean, really, the, there is that impression when you, you know, that when you, you if Stacy's advertising it or Leo's advertising it, it's stuff they approve of, they like. And it better be because I tell you what, people blame me. If they, if they, if they get by oh, yeah. a product we advertise and they don't like it, they don't blame the company. They blame me. It's like a friend said, mm -hmm. hey, you really ought to try this barber and you got a terrible haircut. Who are you going to blame, the barber or the friend? Well, you got a boy, you do buy everything. <laughs> I found the best sprinkly eyelashes through Leo. I bought those. I can't wait. I got the uh, Indiegogo email that my LED eyelashes that you told me to get. I am very <laughs> excited to see them on you. And when you are tired of them, I will take them. You you don't want used eyelashes. Yeah, I don't think oh, so. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Oh. You could just send them to me and I'll try them I on. might. I don't and know. And I'll wear my lavender wig. And then you can be Ooh. like, rave with Stacy. Wow. Are you going to have glow sticks and stuff? I could. I want my I uh, Toots the Unicorn. Where is my Toots the Unicorn? What was Toots the Unicorn? <laughs> oh, God, I can't remember. I can't remember all the things you bought. <laughs> I am such a sucker. Oh my God, I hate myself. I am such a sucker for like, um, kick you know, crowdsourced stuff. This guy's this guy raised eight thousand two hundred and ninety nine dollars. Oh, now his video's even gone. Aww. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna get my Toots. He took his video off YouTube. Oh my. That so is, the idea is, was it was a unicorn that farted in rainbows. And what, what you how much would, was this, Leo? Oh, I don't know. Let me Leo, should, you have too much money. That's what that's what this says. No, you know I what happened? The guy came sense. to the studio and I and I went, Oh, that's really great. And he even brought a toots. I said, Oh, Jamie, that's so great. He's from Austin. You ought to go knock on his door. What did I get? Where is Leo's toots? Where's my toots? I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I feel like when you when you buy these things, you know what you're getting. Unless you bought it in the first six months of Indiegogo uh, Kickstarter. I, conf and I confess that there is a little bit of comedy in it. I I, I admit. Yeah. That I I you did do it this for the clicks. I do this. I do it for the clicks. Um, let's see. There's so I've received some of these things. <laughs> the fuse card I got. Uh, but it only works with swipe machines, even though the picture shows a chip. Uh, so I didn't set that up. I'm waiting for this scooter that was supposed to come six months ago. Waiting for toots. I don't know how long ago I ordered toots. You remember Jibo came. By the way, DOA, the only time it ever worked was when I showed it to you and it wouldn't stop talking. And then and it, now it's... you say it, 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 it burbles? Yeah, it snores. Stores, that's it, stores. But it's oh, really right. burbling. It Like when you're not using it, it makes little sounds. So it's so annoying. And so I wasn't really unhappy when it died. <laughs> <laughs> that's really fast. Can, yeah, no, it died in a day. Can you get your money back from an Indiegogo? I can't remember. I mean, like, yeah. is there a guarantee? I don't think so. I'll send a note to Cynthia saying, hey, Cynthia. Not See, what I'm afraid of is she'll send me one that works. <laughs> Oh, I guess Siri decided to get involved. No, no. Oh, I was like, what's happening here? Siri says, is there a guarantee? I, hear she, I don't know why she heard me. Anyway, enough of this. This is dumb. Google is giving away machine learning. You don't even have to know anything about it. So this is why I wonder how many programmers we need. Yeah. This is Google wants businesses to use its AI to see photos better. Uh, it's a new service they unveiled today for businesses to build apps that can automatically recognize images. The new Cloud Auto ML. 
-hmm. So this is basically to sell their cloud, isn't it? Is to add more value, more more value added to their cloud versus Amazon's. Yeah, I guess. Is that the idea? Except they're giving it away. Uh, is it? They're asking you to put pictures in. Oh, it's oh, it's a profit deal. Well, companies, companies' pictures. Well, companies' pictures. It, no, it could just be a training deal, yeah, just to get their that's what get I mean. what they need. Yeah, that's what I call Sorry. profit. Sorry, oh, like, I don't know. <laughs> For Catalog Google, items. that's profit. They Google, at, to their credit, has a long-term view of profit. They do. Cloud. Let me see if we can find out more about the. the I I remember seeing that it it doesn't require programming. Cloud ML. Google. Google Cloud. Cloud.google.com slash auto ML, A-U-T-L. A suite of machine learning products that enables developers with limited... Oh, you still need to be a programmer, but you don't, don't, you don't have to have you any experience. <laughs> you can be a dumb pro You can be a bad programmer. Uh, and then you easily train custom vision models. Does, that's a good question, oh. Stacey. Where does it... Okay. Where does, yeah, state-of-the-art performance. Get up, Ronnie. I wonder. So, so this is solving a really big problem, but it also raises a really interesting question about machine learning platforms. So there's always this idea, there's this holy grail, Facebook built one internally, of creating a more generic machine learning platform that anyone can use, right? Yeah. Because right now, you have to be very well trained to understand like, oh, it's spitting this back with this probability. That means I need to tweak this particular, you know, so let's say this point. I came up with an idea for an app that tells you whether something's a hot dog or not a hot dog. <sighs> <laughs> now, I'm no machine language programmer. In fact, well, see, and this is, but part of this is because people have domains, right? So I may be a great UI programmer or app programmer, but I don't know anything about machine language training. I would then use this to help me develop the model. Yes, because you're going to have to upload and label your images according to right. this. And Start then with as it little does as a few training. dozen photographic samples and cloud. Yeah, so it's doing the do hard the thing, which is training the neural net. Th that's actually what you have like data scientists do. Right. This is a data scientist in the cloud. Can we expect more hot dog or not apps because of this? So is this, is this, this is basically like using Google's cloud to do natural language processing. Now this is just natural image processing. Right. So here's the example uh, they well, gave. Here they you give have here. to label it. Yeah, so you're going to give. Do you have to label it? You have to Isn't label it. Hard you're job? No, so the hard job is actually when you're trying to build an algorithm, oh, I knowing see. Right. how much to weight, how to weight certain characteristics. So like when I look at a human's face, is it eyes that matter to determine that someone's a human or is it like the distance between eyes and the mouth? So, like, you have to, that's the hard part is tweaking those algorithms. And that's done by people. Does that make sense? Yeah. You have to kind of know a lot about how this works. Yeah. So, but that's the point <laughs> is that a lot of, a lot of companies have, have, uh, you know, experience, expertise in various domains. And their programmers may be quite expert, but they, they wouldn't know how to do this. And so, they're not statisticians. They're not statisticians, so, yeah. So, it yeah, says you can try it free, but I see there's right next to the try it free button, a contact sales button. So <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing it it's free-ish or freemium. And yeah, so a lot of companies have like really cool data. Like imagine, mm -hmm. yeah. actually a good IoT example. Imagine your house, right? So I, I've got, I've trained my, was it my canary? I trained it on recognizing the people in my house, right? Now they they can, Canary can take that, run that through Google's ML to give better image recognition, like true biometric quality image recognition, for example. That would be an interesting use case. Another could be, you know, photos of machines or failures in a plant. If right. you offer those failures up, you don't actually have to know how to figure out how to make a model. You just say, this failure is because of bad soldering. This failure is because of, right. I don't know. You know what this won't work for? Gorillas, chimpanzees, and apes. Yeah, that's and still, humans. I can't believe they haven't gotten back to that. So, well, they have, but they've cut it off because they just- They did it in a weird way. So a few years ago, a Google employee pointed out that when you search for, do an image search, or no, I'm sorry. The Google's, no, the Google, Google Photos had labeled his photos with a black friend as yes. gorillas. Google said, we're appalled. We're genuinely sorry. And uh, the fix was not to fix the recognition, but to eliminate the word Google, uh, gorilla, ape, 
chimp, chimpanzee, and monkey from Google Lens searches. Wired tested Google Photos using a collection of 40,000 images well stocked with animals. It performed impressively at finding many creatures, including pandas and poodles. But according to Wired, no results for gorilla, chimp, chimpanzee, or This is monkey. not a technical matter. This is somebody in PR who said, never let this happen again. Yeah. This is embarrassing. This is bad. It's not a good fix, It, it ain't though. happening again. Yeah. I, I wish I had some... I do have one picture of a gorilla in my... Uh, actually, in my photos, but I can't find it. I do have a picture of an actual gorilla. Well, you wouldn't be able to find it. I know. It says no results. It. The president would be very disappointed not being able to find the gorilla channel. <laughs> <laughs> that was a ruse, but I love that. That was hilarious. It was, was a great who, who ruse. It was a very that? well done ruse. Was it the onion? Who I did forget that? who. No, no, no. It was just some guy who had to change his name on his Twitter account to the gorilla thing is a is is a joke. <laughs> he tweeted an excerpt. That's what it was. He tweeted an excerpt from uh, Fire and Fury that was fake. Uh, oh. that, that said that Donald Trump kept looking for a channel featuring gorillas. Like he had at home. Yeah. And uh, and and aides were so... So here's the, here's the excerpt. On his first night in the White House, President Trump complained the TV in his bedroom was broken because it didn't have the gorilla channel. Trump seemed to be the, under the impression that a TV channel existed that screened nothing but gorilla-based content 24 <laughs> hours a day. <laughs> to appease Trump, White House staff compiled a number of gorilla documentaries into a makeshift gorilla channel. I was okay to this point, right? Up to this point, the next thing is what made you say, okay. Broadcast, yeah, this is the part where it's an April Fool's. Broadcast into Trump's bedroom from a hastily constructed transmission tower on a soft lawn. <laughs> I think there are better ways to do that in the White House. Yeah. Uh, however, the president was unhappy with the channel they had created, moaning it was boring because the gorillas aren't fighting. <laughs> so, so... Anyway, it's like it's a ruse. It's a it's a it's a beautifully it's, done ruse. Yeah, and he got people. It did, and it gets worse. By the way, uh, I, yeah. I won't read on. It just you can Google it. So, by the way, Stacy, uh, you see on Twitter an account called Bleak. Put your photos into the Google Arts and Culture anyway. So if you if you if you look for Giga Stacy, you'll find what this. Uh, oh. Search Twitter. Twitter. Uh, uh, Stacy and you, Leo, are tagged. Look at your look at your mentions on Twitter, and you'll find oh, it. Okay. Oh, Did somebody, 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 somebody solved put this. Stacy's photos into. Oh. Somebody did that as a as a service. Yes, exactly. I get it. G photos as a service. Here we go, Stacy. Oh, these actually do look kind of like you. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. And. The that's current so blonde, good. actually, I think that's better. Dancer Lea Niaco from the Museo Nacional de Teatro e de Danza. Danza. What do you think, Stace? You're muted, Stacey. <laughs> oh, we missed or all of your reactions because you muted your microphone, or did we do it? Okay, no, I muted because I was eating a cookie. Oh. <laughs> did you spit the, did the cookie come out through your nose when you saw this? No, it did not. It was not so such a great. It was not not as awesome. However, you were that one. I'm like, yeah, this is, okay. This is accurate, although you're much more attractive than that. Person. I'm like, it's yes. not the most. Look at the flattering other choices. Above. Yeah, it's not the most flattering, but it but it is actually actually accurate. It's 59 percent accurate. I, I do have a long nose. This this chick is probably cuter than I am, so I'll take it. This I'm the like, problem yeah. with this is I think it does make people. Um. Like notice some, you know, like like made me feel old, made you feel like you had a long nose. You don't have a long nose. I do have a long nose. I'm okay with it. No, you know what? Okay, this is okay. This is what teenagers <laughs> do. Teenagers, fo any if you look at your nose, and, and if you just start looking at your nose, it's everybody's nose is terrible. Noses <laughs> are terrible. I'm okay with my nose. But you shouldn't look at it out of context. And every teenager does this and oh says, I want a nose job. <laughs> oh, I've got a huge All nose. All noses kids, are hideous. They're a hideous protuberance. They believe they have my DNA. They do not want to have the Jarvis nose. <laughs> no. Noses are bad. There's no good my noses. Nose noses look bad. you got to tell every teenager this. This is important. We don't want nose shaming. I, I wasn't shaming my nose. Although my yes, first day. Yes, you were. See, I, you've, you've internalized I, this. I've internalized this. When I came back from college for my first trip home, my mom looked at me and she goes, oh, I'm so glad you finally grew into your nose. 
And oh I was like, my oh. God. It's like, I had a big nose. I had no idea. She's like, no, it's perfect. Now, let me. So, props to her for not saying that to me right away. Have you seen Lady Bird? No. No, not yet. Can't wait. Oh, you got to go see Lady Bird. Uh, the clips I've seen ring so true. They, they are. For the mother-daughter uh, thing. We're mother like, they're screaming yeah, at each other. That, that says, alone, I think this looks go good on you. <laughs> it's, oh, really? You think this would look good on me? It's hysterical. I can't wait to yeah. see it. Yes, yeah, I do want it. to see it. So I found somebody who has a nice nose. Amen Ra in our chat room says, I have no problems with my nose. I actually get compliments on it. <laughs> see? <laughs> I think you're in denial, Amen Ra. Look a little closer. Wait, I don't have a problem with my nose. No, your nose is it, fabulous. No. I actually had a girlfriend who really actually had a hideous nose. Well, <laughs> I'm really <laughs> It does happen. Sad. It it was like a, a shark's fin. It was a okay. it was a thin and it was a blade. It was like scary looking. And it went and it had a big hook in it. But oh. it was just it's a nose. All look it. It's a proboscis. Like you've seen the gorillas with the ugly proboscises. That's all it is. Isn't it's it a, isn't it proboscis? Oh, I'm sorry, proboscis. Proboscis is, is something else. <laughs> yes. It's a proboscis. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> no, my whole like, life I've been, been saying, saying proboscis. No, life. no, you're right. It's proboscis. <laughs> proboscis. And there is a proboscis butterfly. Do you want to see oh. the Hello dog? No, no, that's a different kind of proboscis. How about the proboscis gorilla? Will, Gil, will, will Google give me Google the... Google won't find that. <laughs> no, no, this is what everybody thinks their nose looks like. Everybody <laughs> thinks their nose looks like that. And they're not far wrong. The president's hair looks like that. <laughs> Stop it. Sorry. Stop it. <laughs> Just get Leo No ad hominem comments. Google, according to Cory Doctorow and people who have tested it, is started to ignore old pages. He, Tim Bray, who's a great uh, pioneer of XML and early blogger, and I've, I've followed him since the beginning, was searching for posts he had posted in 2006 and 2008. He knew exactly what the articles were, uh, and he couldn't find them. He, he that used, is disturbing. Yeah, direct quotes. But it makes sense, Right. This is uh, Tim's, uh, I should actually refer to, instead of uh, Corey's article in Boing Boing, Tim's actual article. Back in 2006, I published a review of Lou Reed's Rock and Roll Animal album. Brent Simmons, uh, in 2008, published a review of The Clash's London Calling. He said, here's a challenge. Can you find either of these with Google? 2006 and 2008 is not that long ago. Yeah. Yeah, like, That's uh, forever ago. like our shows are that oh, old. Jeez, yeah. Um, here's the interesting thing. Bing can find it. Duck, duck, go can find it. But the all knowing Google can't. Does stuff fall off the edge? Well, it's possible. And why not? Does anybody really want to read Brent Simmons yes. review of the Clash's London Calling from 2008? Well, maybe. Um, I was trying to find I mean, my old TV guide reviews of Oprah and I couldn't piss me off. Really? There's Yeah. So I'm going to so here's what we do, you see. Here's the article from inessential.com. It is still on the internet very publicly. I'm going to copy and put in quotes the first sentence and it's a fairly long sentence. So that should really narrow it down. Let's see, can we find it? Yes. Maybe I'll, maybe if I go in incognito mode. Maybe maybe because I visited well that site I was going to say, once they link to it in the site, I think that was maybe probably that, maybe that brought a it back to indicator. life. I'm trying to remember some old stories that yeah. I wrote that hit the web and, and Lord, even in this is incognito. Hard. So yeah, so maybe so what that does. So I'm doing it in incognito mode, and I'm still finding it. So do you have? That's what you need, Jeff. Do you remember? Okay. I'm trying to go back. And I see found. My my, my I found the shoe glue me. guru right away. But that's a, that's a that's a different archive made. That wasn't the original. Ah. Um. Okay. But Let's if see. You, yeah, if you search for Shuglu Shug, Guru, <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me get out of this incognito tab because it's no good to me. I want to be in the filter bubble. I want to. Um. 
So my GigaOM stuff is still archived, and that's all the way back to okay. 2008. So now so give me could, a line. I'll put it in quotes. Uh, you know, eight or nine words would be enough from one of okay. your articles. From 2008? Or do you want me can to go, go further as back? As far back as you can go. Well, that's what I'm trying. I, the problem is my 2005 through 2008, I feel like that publication is dead. <laughs> You're right. Like it might not be on the web. No, you're right. It might still not be on yeah. the web. Yeah. So, oh, this one's still on the web. Okay. So then I just need to find Just give me a article. quote. Oh, oh, oh that's, yeah. That's hard, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> give me a quote, man. Um, uh, let, me, uh, let me look for something and then see if I can find it. Um, Here's an article. All right. Patrick Delahanty has an article from 2005 from the Twit website. And and uh, Kevin Rose wrote it, system release party, and it's and it, he Googled it and he found it. So, yeah, now we've dragged this along from from website to website because, of course, where website's been redesigned at least twice since this article was written. Well, Google may not think it's old then. Ah, mm. because it got re. Mm -mm. Okay, well, something to be All aware right, so of. I just so here's here's one. It's always hard um, to test Google. You know what I'm saying? So I have a 2002 post from my blog. Okay, okay, hold on. Let me, and it's still online, but I have never searched for it. And I'm going to an incognito window. Go ahead. Give me five words, ten, six words from it. Okay, hold on. Um, the web, lowercase t, the web, uppercase w, comma, like an old girlfriend is just no fun anymore. <laughs> you thought that in 2000 when? Two. Wow. <laughs> so I found it on my blog. Google ain't finding it. Nope, there it is. There it is. Cool is dead. Oh, I found it right away. With yeah, just five, six words. Not a bad line. The web like an old ago. girlfriend. I didn't uh, even... No, that is a really crappy line. Well, it was an old line. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're right. You're right. You're right, Jeff. Exactly. I think you get. You want to be on that media oh, that that media that, men that list. Was then. You're going to get on that spreadsheet. You better be careful. That was then. Okay, yeah, never mind. I'm can just, we, can we erase just... this part? <laughs> well, I actually, no. I was that, quoting you know, the New York Times. You know, I was quoting the like, New York Times. Like an old boyfriend is no fun anymore. I'm like, eh. yeah. You can write that. The New York Times saying that. that. The New York Times is saying. Oh, well, it's what I said. Oh, he is. He's quoting. He's quoting the New York Times. And you welcome it, apparently. Because the web became too cool, too cute, too soon. Do you go back? I mean, here we have a 15-year-old article. You go back, I mean, you haven't read this in ages, and look at it and go, yeah, that was pretty good. Oh, I also look at things and say, that can't be me. It can't be. I think I would say, I, you know, damn, I'm a good writer. Except what's this? How does that come? It begins with a colon. <laughs> I, I did that. It was a weird thing that I just did at the time. That was my kind of... That's how you began. Jay Rosen used to get yeah. enraged because it made no sense. But I, I used colons to break up sections uh. just for the hell of it, just uh. to be different, just to be obnoxious. Yeah, I used to use weird typography too. Remember when we made the last name capital letters on the twit lower thirds? <laughs> Is Jeff's yeah. lowercase? No. Oh, on, some, on some shows, we've reverted to normal capitalization for some reason. I don't even know why I did that, but it's the same reason you put colons in there. It's just like jazz it up. 440 episodes? That's what we're <sighs> on. Wow. Yeah. That's a perfect A. <sighs> oh, GigaOM took dates off of all of our stuff. <laughs> so now I'm not sure where that way. <laughs> it, it never ages. Oh, this is aged, let me tell you. Oh, but they'll charge you $300 for it. Wow. Oh, no. Unbelievable. Who owns it? Uh, Brian. Some guy. Reese. Some, Some guy? guy? Some he guy. said, He's... you know what? This is called long tail monetization. It's a whole new that's, thing. That's what this is. He took a seminar. How to monetize the old web. Google Actually, is. Actually, I. Th yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, go on. Google bought Zagat in two 2011 for $151 million. Never liked the uh, what Google did with it, which is basically bury it. I loved Zagat guides. People who live in New York knew about Zagat early on, right? Right, Jeff, because that that was where they started. How do you say it? Zagat. How do you is say it, it Jeff? Zagat or Zagat? Zagat, I think. Zagat. Okay. <laughs> that was a problem. Nobody could pronounce it. 
I was like, That's oh true. man, now I've I've been pronouncing that wrong my whole life too. <laughs> it was one of Marissa Meyer's last Google Acts. Oh, to buy it. Oh, for a huge amount of money. One hundred fifty-one million dollars. I'm glad the Zagats or the Zagats. They're people, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad the Zagats or the Zagats. I think it's Zagat. You know. Here, ask. Here, hold up. How do you pronounce Zagat? Never mind. Let's ask YouTube. How do you pronounce Zagat? Oh. Zagat. 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 So, Zagat. so if you trust Google. I do. I believe they bought Google it. They should know. Well, but <laughs> this was exactly uh, right. this was from 2010, a year before they bought it. Anyway, they want to sell it now. I'm sad because uh, they basically killed it, right? Kind of. These were um, those red books. They were red guides. And the Very thing convenient. that was great, this is pre-internet really, uh, is that it was all the reviews came from people. So if you went to a restaurant, you'd write a Zag... How did they even get these Zagat reviews? I don't know. You'd mail it to them? I don't know. You'd write a review, and then the Zagat would... You'd go to a restaurant page, and it would have little snippets and would give it a, a rating. Um, I What was it from... Because Lisa and I used to do this, I think, from 1 to... 20, 20 1 to 30? 30. 1 to 30. Because like a really good restaurant is like a 27, a 28, 29. And Lisa and I, would we would do this all the time. We'd go to restaurants and she'd go, I think it's a 23. And I'd say, what? This is easily a 25. We'd actually we'd do that, which I yeah. loved. And I trusted Zagat. One of the things you learned about Zagat is that it was very much conditioned by the people in the city. So Indianapolis's best restaurant wasn't comparable to San Francisco's best restaurant, even though they right. both get a 28, because people in Indy liked that restaurant. So you just would say, well, I'm getting the, you know, the locals take on it. It was like I, a great Calvin Trillin piece. He said that when, when they tried to impress him, and it's Calvin Trillin writing for the New Yorker, loved things like hot dogs and right. And, and, but people, chili. But you go to Cleveland, people would have to try to impress him with the fanciest restaurant in Cleveland. And he said they always served, and this is a quote, stuffed heavy with heavy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget going to the best restaurant in Greenville, South Carolina. It included <laughs> hush puppies with every course. I hey, you hush not. puppies are delicious. They're delicious, but they're not good for you. And it had with every course. Uh, yeah. In fact, that's I've had a lot of fun with that. We went to Detroit, actually Dearborn, to visit uh, the Ford folks. And they took us to the best hamburger restaurant in Dearborn. No. And was it good? No. It says a 12. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, I, this is an example of how uh, the, I feel like the, the Internet bros ruined Zagat. And they did because they had stuff like Yelp and Google reviews that they thought were better and they are patently worse. I hate Yelp. One, worse. you have to use the app. Two, everybody on it are so freaking spoiled. Woof. So we, yeah, yes. That's a really good point, Stacey. So we really had... Good point. This perfect system, dead trees, admittedly, but you would go to a city, you'd get the Zagat guide, and you would, and you could trust it. I literally went through the top ten restaurants in San Francisco according to Zagat. It was great, and it's true. Restaurant nine was a little bit worse than restaurant one. I mean, it was accurate. So now you pronounce Zagat Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cobra. <laughs> I stole this joke. <laughs> uh, so Google is going to sell Zagat. Uh, I don't know for how much. I guarantee you it's not $151 million. It's not going to be $151 million. Dollars. Zagat no. was founded in 1979 by Tim and Nina Zagat. Wait, so are those the reviews as part of Google? Aren't they... Part of Google yeah, reviews that's why when they you did look it. at a place? Yeah, but they didn't, eh, they, they didn't adopt they didn't the, the, the system. They didn't... So they, you don't get the numbering system. They didn't. They did. They've mushed it in without in undifferentiated. Because we, we people like us told them don't go in the content business, and then they owned this content thing. They didn't know what to do with it because they weren't in the content business. Really frustrating. I hate it when companies ruin something that's perfectly good, and that's what the, that's kind of the internet's uh, brand, isn't it? You know what? It's like an old girlfriend. Don't Thanks, Leo. There. Thanks a lot, Leo. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I was quoting the New York Times. 
Okay. Google's changing it, how you they, make when money. Are we get, where did we get that thing with the with the fist in your head? What, what is that happening? I thought they're working You don't on get it. one, Jeff. Only pa she gets pa one. Padre was supposed to do this, you but don't, it hasn't happened. It's not a not a dual punching thing. I don't get punches from both sides. You could give me a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> Although that would be pretty funny if you both at the same time <laughs> hit the button. Bam! Boom! Ha! Stun the The host. great thing is there'll be a slight lag. So I'll get stunned for no apparent reason. Yeah. YouTube It'll be is like bad dog training. I got my uh, my email right. from YouTube. Did you uh, the YouTube partner program they are changing uh, the requirements for monetization. I won't be able to monetize my Leo Laporte channel, not that I ever did or wanted to. Uh but I imagine a lot of smaller people, uh, you know, are going to be. I can't upset. monetize well, my channel with all you have subscribers. If you want to monetize it, you have to. These are the requirements. You have to have four thousand hours of viewing time in the last twelve months and one thousand subscribers. Oh. That's not a high bar, but it's it's okay. higher higher than no, a lot. It's higher Part of the than what I've got. Doing this yeah. Is because they're now going to have a premium uh, ad opportunity where they're going to review content uh, better. And so I think it's not worth their while to review drags. But my daughter was saying on, on among her YouTube VidCon world, there's there's some furor about this because some people may have a lot of views, but they don't have subscribers, so they're going on Twitter begging people to, to subscribe. Right. Um, they're but, trying. You know, this, like is, that, this is Google's response to those weird child videos. Exactly. Exactly. So subscriber is a good signal, they think. A thousand's not a lot. No, it's not. That's but my Leo, my twit.tv slash Leo, I mean, uh, youtube.com slash Leo Laporte. But that was always just, that was like a personal place where I stuck old videos and stuff. Yeah, I never monetized. Yeah, I, I, don't, briefly I don't need to, start to monetize a company, it. But Let's see how close I am. Wait a minute. I have 3,762 subscribers. Oh. But I just don't have just very many views. Watch. I need more views. You have 4,000. You need 4,000 hours. A uh, But see, I don't put anything on here. The last thing I put on here was six months ago. The Galapagos videos from, a, but this is where I would like put like the 360 degree videos I post, I've made and stuff like that. I think there's a, a video of me in the hot tub on one. Here's a video. You don't Please remember no. this, Stacy? Please no. I was bald at one time. <laughs> Why? What happened? Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, nobody ever understood what happened. No, I shaved my head for charity. Oh, I see that. Okay. It's the worst look ever. <laughs> it's not an attractive look. I'm not going to lie. I look like Curly and the Three Stooges. Last week the That's show. okay. You know what? I have done some crazy stuff with my hair, so I'm not going to judge. Don't ever look, shave your head. Actually, look you'd, look fine. Judging. you'd look like Sinead O'Connor. You'd look fine. But if you look... Do you have any more tattoos? No, just the Me? one. <laughs> Do you have tattoos? Uh, no. Oh, shoot. Oh. I, thought we were I used to have a tongue ring, but that's it. A tongue ring? Mm -hmm. you mean a stud? How do you talk with that? That's mm -hmm. never. What's a never, ring? How, how hard is it? Is a ring, like a, a, a loop, yeah. a stud. No, it was just a stud. Yeah, it's not. It's very dangerous. My uh, my yeah, daughter. I, I survived. My daughter got one when she was too young to know better. I was kind of upset, but she didn't have any infection, and she's removed it, and her tongue has grown back. Your tongue grows back, right? It does. Sort of. It's yeah. kind of cool. No, it totally grows. Totally back. grows back. There's the risk it'll split. Is one problem, and you don't want to split tongue. <laughs> I know. Forked you, tongue. You do not want a forked tongue. There goes there goes my, my podcasting days right there. <laughs> um, yeah. Especially with your name. That's a hidden bomb. No, that's a hidden bomb on our T. It doesn't work. You can't do it. That's a hidden bomb. That's a challenge. I could tell Leo Laporte. Yeah, you could. 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 But I can't take that to hear about them. Okay. Well. <laughs> This is one of the highest moments in our <laughs> 440 shows. Oh, hey, what about Google's parental consent? <laughs> My Leo Laporte's tongue stud simulator. You don't know about that? Okay. Uh, what is it? What is it you want to talk uh, about? The update anything on Chrome this, supervised this, this, this. users. Yeah, I'm like anything. anything <laughs> Let's talk about old girlfriends again. Um, parental con Google updating parental control features. Just because I saw this, and as a parent who feels that Google is lacking in their parental control division. I'm like, what are they doing? They're taking it out without replacing it. Yeah. They, they, I read this and I'm like, doing. oh. That's what that's they're not doing. not what I want. Um, why so, would they do that? 
Well, people were really upset when they initially, not when they initially, but they had updated some of their user stuff probably a couple months ago. And it basically, when your kid was 13, they were kicked off of it. Oh. So there was nothing like, it was basically like following the DCM. Yeah, DMCA, yeah. DMCA. COPPA, actually. The Child Online Protection and Privacy Act, yeah. So it was following that. you say COPPA? I say COPPA. <laughs> I go Copa, Copa Cabana. How do you say okay. it with a ring? Uh, in your, in your no, studio? no, no, no. We're not going back there. <laughs> not going back there. Anyway. So, um, do you use this for your daughter? Um, I've looked at using it. Right now, we don't because we just have Safe Search on everything, and that seems to be fine. She's not adventurously browsing for things. We've had lots of conversations about how. There are things that you can't unsee. And so yes. far, that's what... They br they burn themselves into your brain. Right. And, and, and trust me, you do not want them there. And she is, she's pretty both conflict and like... She does not want to see. She knows she doesn't want to see things. So she's like, I don't want to see that. So. One thing you never want to see is a bald Leo, for instance... That's and, true. And having seen that Cautionary now, tale. You will never get that out of your brain. I, oh, so no, this is the family link. So this is what, so the email sends people to the family link parent control solution, which is the sucky one. Oh, so they, they're not getting rid of, they, they have another solution. Yeah. So uh -huh. this is the family link, which I looked at and I thought it was kind of lame. So... This is for Android phones, and it lets you manage your apps, set your screen time limits, and stuff like that. Um, and it's designed for kids, but once the kid turns 13, it's done. <laughs> yeah, that's so, a kind of an abrupt uh, evacuation. That's kind of... Yeah. And then I the mean, kid, that's kind of how... The kid does a search for, I don't know, bald Leo and gets this, and then is scarred for that, life. Exactly. Yeah. They might turn into a serial killer. You yeah. never know. Yeah. So... Yeah, I'm not. I'm Car not sold. Carsten, did you censor that? Did you not show that picture? <laughs> <laughs> now tell me, oh. tell me if that nose looks normal to you. <laughs> See, one of the reasons we have hair is to distract people from the nose. I'm saying that. I'm just. This, by that. the way, was when they cleaned up the situation. Yeah, because right? uh, yeah, you were there for the initial shaving. Was Which that was as like bad as your Christmas Eve me. or something? In New Year's Eve. We, New Year's had a, Eve. we had a big party. I never want to do a New Year's Eve show with y'all. That's, Don't that's ever. the moral of this lesson. <laughs> we shaved Jeff's beard poorly and shaved my dome poorly. And then I went to a barber, thank God, and she she cleaned it up. Look at that with a straight razor. <sighs> it was actually... The, it, yeah. Well, no, it was awesome. She wrapped my head in hot towels. And, and it was very old-fashioned. And she did a bowl with a brush and lathered it up, and it was fun. And then when they shave your head with a straight razor, there's a... Yeah, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can, you can, you can, you can, yeah, thank you. You can pull that down. No, no, nobody. No. You're singing the Sweeney Todd song the whole time? I mean... <laughs> Here's a, a blurry but effective image of me shaving uh, Jeff. <laughs> he did not enjoy that. <sighs> by the way, by the way... Thank you, Google. I searched for barber in my Google Photos. And you found that? And I found these. <laughs> Poor Jeff. You are, you are so understanding. Well, you're, though you were more, because we, we, you got talked into more and more and more. The tattoo being the... Yeah, we raised... Lisa, Lisa was not happy. What did, how much did we raise for UNICEF? $80,000, something like that. Thanks to all of you. Good. Yeah. And, um, and by the way, it's probably the first and last time you'll be shaved by a barber in a tuxedo. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just saying. Are you ever going to do the show again or no? You're, you're I really would like to, but I think it's just, I think I might die if I did. And I, I know my- Stacey Leo stayed up for 24 hours. It was 24 hours. So with the idea, yeah, the horror, the horror. <laughs> the idea was uh, that new, I had this brainstorm because one night, one New Year's Eve, we were watching, you know, the Dick Clark's rocking New Year's Eve. He was still alive. And the- and we were watching it, and it's in New York City, but we're on the on the West Coast. And at 9 p.m., the ball drops, and it's over. And it's like, no, but we got three more hours till New Year's Eve. But no, it's over. New Year's Eve in New York, it's over. 
So I so thought, that's well, all that matters. Yeah, what we should do, and as an international broadcaster, is is oh, start God. celebrating when it's the new year in Samoa, and go all the way through till the new year in Hawaii. And we did. You did twenty four hours on the air. You did it, really? We did every hour a ball drop and a champagne pop and balloon drop. We had a we had we we did it twice. We had uh, uh, John rigged the ceiling so I could drop the balloons. And then after the balloons dropped, because we had to do another one in an hour, we, we would go, uh, 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 and we pulled them back up to the ceiling. <laughs> the first time they went in mass and it didn't really work. So the next year we had, he made hundreds of individual fishing line suspended balloons. We pulled back up to the roof. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. It yeah. was so much oh fun. God. I really enjoyed doing it. Was it was great fun. I still think fun. it's a brilliant idea. And maybe the way to do this, and we did it for charity, which is great. We raised a lot of money. But I think the, I think the way to do this in future was to get would to be get all the podcasters together. You know, yeah, any, you should any, get hosts to do like a six every, hour shift. Yeah, every, or an hour. Everybody does an hour in their region. We did get Skype calls. We tried to get Skype calls from every region. We got them from many regions. But yeah. there are some places that are uninhabited. Who's watching the ball drop there? Right. But the fun was like Sydney, which is way before we have it in the U.S. And they have oh, yeah. fireworks. It's wonderful. It's really wonderful. All right. I don't, we had sorry. that strange dinner. Oh, was that that year? Yeah, that was that year. I, th I think it was. Yeah. No, that was it? our Christmas. That was terrible. Well, that was your Christmas. That's right. That was a Christmas. Yes. Don't, oh, I, 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 I'm, please don't remind. I feel so bad about that, Jeff. <laughs> it was funny. <sighs> We, f we flew out all the hosts. This will never happen again. And we thought, well, they came, to, they, they came to Petaluma. We should go to a Petaluma, a classic Petaluma place. In Austin, if you were going to take them to like the, the quintessential Austin place, what would it be, the Salt Lake or so somewhere? Where would you probably go? Probably like the Salt Lake. Salt Lake. So I didn't know this, but we took them to the Washu House, which was an old roadhouse, a 150-year-old roadhouse that used to have good food. <laughs> <laughs> it was fried fried with fried it was worse than that they had that vegetables so but they were just god awful uh, oh it was just terrible it was so funny it became a, so it became a shtick of course it well, became a shtick. I, but I still feel very guilty about no, it no you should no no it was great it was great uh, Facebook has created something called watch party to watch videos with your friends is this what is this what you're talking about yeah well that's part no no that's just part of it that's part of them trying to make video less a solitary uh i think that's kind of a fun idea situation i think it is too so like i you're uh, well I, I don't tell me how it works oh well i don't know how this works i think watching videos with your friends remotely is a good idea really yeah we used to i used to call friends up and we would queue up you know a movie together and we would just sit on the phone and watch a movie together and and how did oh, that how did that, did that feel good that was that like yeah, because like if History it, Science Theater three thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could just be. I mean, it's it's like the idea of being in a theater when something scary happens. You can hear the person go. <gasps> yes. You know what you do. You watch Get Out with people who haven't seen it before. <laughs> that have you seen it? I have. Oh shoot! I was going to suggest we do this on the air. No. Let's all start watching Get Out. Because that's one of those movies where you go, oh, what? What? Uh, Twitter stock at two-year high. Yay. Don't know what that even... <laughs> that's the right reaction. What is, what is, what is the impact? High-flying Twitter stock. Um, What's it doing differently? What did I hit on my One Skype? word. Trump. Yeah. That's all. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you're right. you have the leader of the free world free associating on your service at all hours of the day and night, what? why wouldn't your stock go through the roof? I mean, that's, that's, that's like having a, being a fly on the wall in the Oval Office. Um, <laughs> Bitcoin having a little bit of a trouble. Little tumble. Yeah, how bad is it? I think I've, I think I'm finally in the negative. A suicide prevention hotline, according to Motherboard, was the top post in the cryptocurrency subreddit yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah, it's that bad. <laughs> what that is that? Just been yeah. funny. Coinmarketcap.com. 
Bitcoin 11, is 11,000. $134.51. Well, cents. for those of us that can't get into our Bitcoin wallet, it's kind of uh, <laughs> like not bad news. Like it's less just important. watching the world go by. Just watching it <laughs> go up and down. Will it go? So, okay, you smarty pants. Will it go up again? Yeah. Stacey? <laughs> My son. I'm like human, human shruggy right here. I'm like, I don't even know. This Did you defies... read the, the New York Times article on the, what was yes. it? The the Everyone's getting hilariously rich except you. Yes. <laughs> Nellie strikes again. Uh, is her real name Nellie Bowles? Yeah. Or is yeah. that a pseudonym? Because there's a very her, famous it. Nellie Bowles. There right? is a very famous one, yes. Yeah. Everyone is getting hilariously rich and you're not. It's the story of the Bitcoin bros, guys who are making fortunes because they had the intelligence or good luck to buy Bitcoin really cheaply and a lot of it a few years ago, the wealth, she writes, is intoxicating news, feverish, because it seems so random. And she visits the, this, the what is it called, the crypto castle, <laughs> where these, these Bitcoin bros live. The crypto castle's king is Jeremy Gardner, 25, a rakish young investor with a hedge fund who has become the de facto tour guide for crypto newcomers. Early one afternoon, he opened a bottle of... This could have been on Twitter. He opened a bottle of rosé while he charged half a dozen external batteries so he wouldn't have to ever plug in his phone in Ibiza the next week. I do ICOs. It's my thing, he said. He wore a pink button front and pink pants. It's me. He wore a pink button front and pink pants. It's me, a couple of VCs, and a lot of charlatans. This Look at the refrigerator with all the stickers. Where's the Twit sticker on here? Yeah, uh, you might not be popular with Bitcoin. I might bros. not be. About eight people live in the crypto castle on any given night. Some of Mr. Gardner's tenants brought out snacks, Cheez Its, and a jar of Nutella. Ooh. Ooh. Gross. They're, they're into the Cheez It and Nutella thing. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> one Ooh. of the one of the bedrooms has a stripper pole. But I bet there's no women in there. Mr. Yeah. Gardner leaned back into the sofa and rested his feet on the table. He recently did an ICO for a startup after party. You can ICO anything, he said. Actually, he probably talks like this. You can ICO anything. He runs a distributed, he runs distributed, 180 page magazine about cryptocurrency that comes out once a year. That's not a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> He's now raising $75 million for his hedge fund, Awesome Ventures, spelled A U S U M. Awesome Ventures. Uh. Oh. He said his closest friends are moving to Puerto Rico to get around paying taxes. They're going to build a modern-day Atlantis out there, he said. But for me, it's too early in my career to check out. Remember, he's 25. I hate this guy. This is why people hate Silicon Valley. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Look, look. This is, this is another place, the Crypto Crack House, where they've named the hallways things like Coin Ye West and Bitcoin Boulevard. And Ethereum Alley. Oh, I See, can't we, wait we for this do... bubble to pop. I cannot I wait for this bubble to pop. This is, by the way, do you know Nellie? Because she deserves a Pulitzer for this. This is good. She does She does good work. She also wrote, though, that New York Times article on sexism in the Valley that normalized sexism. Oh, I don't know if yeah, you remember like it's that. It's okay because everybody's doing it? Um, it, was, it was more like it, it was... The MRA people at different, she interviewed like men's rights activists at different companies. And it was the quotes about like, you don't see women as the CEO of car companies. Why would they expect them to be a CEO of tech companies? And Well, she's just but, quoting these doofuses. I hope it was. I know, but the, the controversy was, why would you put them. an article like that without any yeah. alternative? Well, it's not as bad as talking about a neo-Nazi's favorite food. And I think True. Nellie also did the raw water thing <laughs> last week. She's, pop you know, we got to get her in here. She's uh, she's in San Francisco. Yeah, she's got to be a stuff. pseudonym, she, or, or else her parents have a real f good sense of humor. Nellie Bowles was the woman who tried to beat Phineas Fogg's uh, record for going around the world, right? Or am I? Am was I, she British? Yeah. You know, unfortunately, ne the the new Nelly is so famous 
There's no. Um, yeah, there's no uh, no no of nothing of the old Nelly, but she was a famous. Uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm making. May, am I mistaken? Am I getting the name wrong? No, no, you're right. I I don't know any of this. <laughs> yeah, because you don't. You're too young to remember the Nelly Bowles who's who went around the world. Hmm. Mm. Meanwhile, my favorite headline of the week. Oh, she worked at Recode. Yeah, and she Vice. worked at Recode. And Vice. And yes. The Guardian. And The Guardian. All right. And I think, well, I'm not going to say. a Fulbright fellow to Swaziland. She's the real thing. To Swaziland. Swaziland. What? That's probably where she learned her trenchant prose. No. S Sally Bowles was, the, uh, was in uh, Cabaret. That's a different Bowles. That's right, Sally Bowles. Maybe Sally that's Bowles. what I'm thinking of. No, no, no. There's a, there was a, I know, I know it was Nellie Bowles. Yes. Well, maybe it's not Nellie Bowles. Maybe it's something, Nellie something else. Nellie Bly. That's who I'm confusing it with. <laughs> Thank you, Google. Sally Bowles and Nellie Bly. Okay. <laughs> Sally Bowles, Nellie Bly makes Nellie Bowles. Oh, All no, right, let's uh, wrap it up with our picks of the week. And then I hope you, Stacy, have prepared something fabulous. Fabulous for, for us. And for dinner. So I have a question. I can take you on the road with me to show it to you in person, or I posted it on Instagram. Take us this on is, the road. Take us on the road. Okay, so Karsten, are we? Re that means I'm going to switch from the nice camera and the nice mic to my headphone mic and other things. We have how do no you idea how that? this is going to work. Okay, but, uh, but let's see it. Can we see your do wig? You your wig collection while you're there? Nope. <laughs> okay. Um, why don't you guys go first? And that way I can tell right. my family members to get out of the Ooh. way if they don't want to be on camera. Wow, aren't you thoughtful? I just forced my family uh -oh. members to be on camera. I didn't I didn't ever tell them to get out of the way. I said you're on. Um let's uh let's start. I don't I don't know if I have anything this week. I'm thinking now. Thinking about I had things. I could show you how to make an Android phone black and white. <laughs> oh, you did show us that. And you showed us about um I used Okay, them. I just I just warned them. They're fine. Okay. What did you, All right. Here did we you go. turn off your mic and go, hey, <laughs> I'm coming down the hall. Out of the way. No, okay. I just, this. I am. The <gasps> we can now see the rest of Stacy's room. Oh, We've never there. seen this before. Ooh, ooh, uh, ooh, ooh. Oh, this looks really nice. It's not the it sterile does. room. We, that see I, the, we see the boring half. Yeah. Right. You guys, the nice well, half. That's, that's the part that I look at. That's so right. nice. So, oh, we're also testing my Wi-Fi. Oh, I like that painting. Oh, says, Hi, That's Mom. a pretty painting, a sunny, sunny nice. sunflower oh, painting. I need my phone. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> how are you? How are you even doing this? I'm walking this down magical. the hall with my laptop. This is magical. Okay. It's amazing. What hath God wrought? Wait a minute, you're back in the office. Well, I had busy. to get my phone to control the device. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so confused. I was getting lost. Yes. <laughs> I need breadcrumbs. Okay, we're getting lost in Stacy's house. Okay. She loves this that. She has two of those uh, uh, sunflowers. Yeah. Yeah, I love those. Yeah. Yeah. You probably have a whole field somewhere. All right. I feel like we should be playing uh, the Texas theme right now. She's processing. Wait a minute. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm recessing. Okay. Oh, you can't see the colors. Yes, we can. Did you get those? Oh, you got them. I'm so, so jealous. So this, this is the nano lights. It's these this are is the, a, this is all the rage. These nano lights. Yes, and I'm I'm sorry that the color isn't really coming through well, but it looks amazing in person. And let's. This is so cool. So the idea is these can be put together in a variety of ways. Oh, thanks. So this is Sorry. this is green. This is my favorite. This is uh, orange that'll come up, but you may not so, see it. Can y'all see it as orange? I want to know more about these nano lights. We had a caller on the new screensavers who had them, but they, I thought this was this is like the latest thing. Well, there you go. Um, they were the hottest gift for Christmas. Oh, okay. Or a hot gift at Christmas. They're the uh, is it nano leaf? It's the nano leaf light. So each of these triangles is an LED. Yeah. One controller controls 30 triangles. These are 15 right here. Okay. The main pack has, let's see, what does the main pack have? So it's the pattern you chose to put up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is firework, and it'll firework every Ooh. time 
I'm saying something, and that's oh. because it comes with something called the rhythm module. So you could play music. Alexa, play Hamilton. <gasps> Let's hear the music. Original Broadway cast wow, your Alexa is smarter than mine. I have to actually say Hamilton Original Cast Soundtrack 2017. It's, she's still telling me who's on this. Who's so. on a long time. Stacy's <laughs> Spotify. Oh my God. I'm going to switch here. That's your, pretty That's one of the better light, uh, music light cool. things I've ever seen. There's a different pattern, so. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to get depressed. How much do these cost? Um, how much do they cost? Alexa, stop. $229, um, dollars for nine panels. For nine panels. Oh and then it's and then 60 how much bucks for the, the dancing three. module. The dancing model now comes with the main one. Oh, good. Oh, it includes so, the rhythm upgrade model module. Yeah. You could have up so, to 30 panels total. So you have to think right. about what you want to do. Well, now you can, it's just on a power strip, so, or on a power, on the power cord. So you could actually put more together. You just need more power converter transformers. Oh, so the controller can handle more than 30. It's the power. Well, it, the controller is, uh, no, you need a whole separate. You need a controller like, for each 30. Yes. I don't know why I'm asking this. I mean, Does it what? Does it coordinate across the multiple controllers? I think so, actually. I think there's a way to hook that up. Because you see a lot of, like, bar setups and kind of... At CES, they had, like, a massive setup that was coordinated. So how, I assume so. How hard uh, was this to install, to hang on the wall? It's command tape. It's 3M command tape. So you just... You just stick it on the wall. <laughs> And then you can redo it. So here, I'll take you back up to the office. So my family can come out of wherever they're hiding. Hello, family. They Hello, can't Stacey's hear you, Jeff. family. So <laughs> it, I, it looks like I, could, I found it on Amazon for a little, for less, 219. I don't know, though. It's not. Does it have the rhythm module? Yeah. Oh, maybe not. Maybe that's the difference. Because I think that's like 30 bucks. Yeah. So if oh, you, you want to see the sunset? On a nano leaf or in the real world? Oh, can you wow, see the sunset? Wow, what sun? a view. Look at that great view you have. Oh, That's you can't nice. see the sunset. My no. head's in the way. Yeah, I could sort of see it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's really nice. It's beautiful. That's a nice, what a great view of the sunset. That's so, why do we you live like, here. are you giving a positive review to the nano leaf? Do you like them? I am. I like them. They're fancy, they're fun. Your kids will love them. They're not a practical. When you're spending this money, this is purely like the same kind of money you would spend on like, I don't know, pictures for your house as opposed to like a if, light. It it feels a little limited only because, you know, it's these triangles. It's all, you can only do things that you could do with the triangle. So at CES, starting in fall, they will have touch sensitive squares. And again, uh, that is on my Instagram. Uh, I sat and it and got all excited because I'm a goofus. So... Are you Giga Stacy on Instagram? I'm Higgin Bob. Or no, I'm Stacy on IoT. I should know because we showed it uh, last week when you. Thank you, by the way, for joining us last oh, week. Oh yeah, that was yeah, that awesome. was great. That was per yeah. it was a perfect uh, perfect timing, so and you and you had appearance. Yeah, the one right under there it is. Uh, oh right no, under no, the, the touch one is this yeah. one here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's kind of neat. Oh, isn't that fun? Oh, so it's, she touches it and it goes. Whoo. It's pretty fun. Wow. So somebody says, what's the application for this? <laughs> it's it's decorative. Like I said, it's like pictures. So if you would spend money on pictures and art in your house. All right, here's uh, my nerdy idea. I'd have to get enough of them. I want to do the game of life, you know, Conway's game of life on these. You'd have to write a program probably. And you need a lot of them or there would be a very boring game of life. You know about the game of life? The one with the car that you drive around and the no. little tiny people? No. It's an old, it comes from scientific marriage. It's an old geek thing. I mean, really old. Only, uh, only old, old geeks would get it. Let me, uh, let me just show you an example. It's a cellular automation. But see, what is, this is huge. What, how big would this have to be to play this game? 
I can make a that's a you, you can make a pretty oh. small grid, right? Let's make a glider. So you see the glider moves. It'd be really fun mm -hmm. to make this out of that. But what this is a huge this would cost thousands of dollars. But I bet you somebody with a lot of money is going to do something like that. That'd be fun to have on the wall. I'd put it on the wall here. You can tell them to. Uh, you can tell the NanoLeaf people to. If you go to their website, you can see. Right they do stuff because yeah. they, they got them. They got a lot of them. Right. They can do, and that's their marketing. It'd be kind of fun to do this. That, that yeah. would be fun. You know what? I want, I want light up Legos doing that. Light up Legos. All right. Very nice thing, Stace. So I really there's like your that. thing. Thank you. Super fun. No practical purpose whatsoever. And you can also control them from Madam A. So I could. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, but what, <laughs> what commands does Madam A have for it? She turn uh, turns them on? them on and off. I think she also theoretically recognizes scenes. However, when I ask her to do a scene, she does not respond well. Yeah. So. That is one of those things where I'm like, eh, maybe. I haven't troubleshot it yet because I got back from CES on Friday and can you buy them in bulk? Can you get them? Can you get like, can you get wholesale? Like if I called them because they say I'd like 400 of them and get a deal. You know, you could try. They they did they show on one of their pages a bar that the base of the bar is just these lights. Yeah, you because to do a game of life, you need 20 by 20 at least. I think. To make it at all interesting. I still don't know what the game of life is, but I'm going to look it up. <laughs> look up Con well, don't you look up Conway's game of life. That's the that's okay. the that's the real one. And now we give you our number of the week for Mr. <laughs> Professor Jeffrey G. Jarvis. Uh, um so I have two left. Mm -hmm. Um Apple's gonna repatriate thirty eight billion dollars in the tax. Is that field. all? That's uh, out of what, 220? 200 plus, yeah. 240, something like that. But the more interesting than that, I thought, was this. BlackRock, which is the largest investment firm out there with four, all of our 401ks and such, sent a letter to, uh, is sending a letter to the companies that it invests in saying, contribute to society or risk losing our support. They have $6 trillion in investments. <gasps> Good. 401ks, exchange traded funds, mutual funds and such. Good. As such, they are the largest investor in the world. And have outsized influence, says the New York Times. You know, and thus, this is great. Forget the Paris Accord. Just get BlackRock to do it. It's a quote from their letter. Society is demanding that companies, both public and private, serve a social purpose. To prosper over time, every company must not only deliver financial performance, but also show how it makes a positive contribution to society. So Right on. That's nice. I hope they're serious that's, about it. I hope they are, too. Yeah. And what's the definition of positive influence? We shall see. But and what's a negative yeah. We shall see. But I'm going to point you, this isn't a really a thing, but I am going to point you an article that everybody should read. This is from Atlantic Magazine. Alexis Madrigal who does great stuff. This, did, by the way, he was one of the people who went to Fusion, right? Is Fusion yes. gone? Fusion? No, 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 no. It's now called Splinter, and it's part of the Fusion Media Group at... Um, Univision. Yeah, Univision owns it and started it. But and they, they, and they hired Gizmodo, the, like, the Roots. They hired Kevin Roos. They hired Alexis Madrigal. They hired great people who's, um, you know, I, uh, 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 Felix Salmon. Felix Salmon, uh, who's the woman who wrote the uh, about the toilet in Kansas. Uh, anyway, so it's still Cashmere around. Hill. Cashmere Hill. Love all of these people, some of the best tech journalists uh, or journalists in general, but but tech focused journalists. And now they're writing for other things. Sounds like they're not kept busy. I don't know. Anyway, Alexis writes about the strange brands in your Instagram feed. See, he bought this fine looking West Lewis jacket. It all started with an Instagram ad for a coat, the West Lewis Businessman Windproof Long Coat. It looked like a decent camel coat, not fancy, but fine. And I'd been looking for one just that color. So when the ad touting the coat Why? popped up and the price was in the double digits, hey, don't question his taste. I, I figured, <laughs> hey, a deal. The brand West Lewis seemed like another one of the small clothing companies that has me tagged in the vast Facebook advertising ecosystem as someone Ooh, who does Amazon own it? Sorry. No, this is far worse. 
Okay. But like, yeah, that's what he thought. Like Faraday, Birdwell, Beach, Bridges, Life After Denim. So uh, perhaps the copy on the West Lewis site was a little much, claiming Les Lewis is the perfection of modern gentleman clothing. But in a world where an oil company can claim to fuel connections, who was I to fault a small entrepreneur for some purple prose? Several weeks later, the coat showed up in a black plastic bag emblazoned with the markings of China Post, that nation's postal service. I tore it open and pulled out the coat. The material has the softness of a Las Vegas carpet and the rich sheen of a velour jumpsuit. The fabric is so synthetic, it could probably be refined into bunker fuel for a ship. It was technically the item I ordered, only shabbier than I expected in every aspect. It turns out, and, and you can watch this video for a 17-year-old from Scotland, Roy Gannon, that people are creating... Basically, drop shipping companies advertising mm -hmm. on Facebook and Instagram. And there are all the tools out there. Uh, this kid shows you how to use Shopify and a bunch of Shopify plugins to generate traffic. Madrigal calls him the Bob Ross of e-commerce. <laughs> he yeah, we, we, we buy stuff in that thing. Every, the weirdest stuff comes but through be, these companies. But be too. careful because it's not all great stuff, right? Well, so they not only do they do like this highly optimized advertising to catch like right. hipster type people, they also just do arbitrage against pricing. So sometimes right. when you order something, so that's when we catch them. We catch them when we've done like lowest price for a good. And then we get like, I think we bought some canned air that came via. I drop think ship. increasingly, and this happens on Amazon too, you're going to have to be very careful about what you're buying and who you're buying it from. He, uh, there's all these Shopify plugins. There's one called Oberlo, which allows you to pull products directly from AliExpress. Click a button and something that was manufactured in the Chinese hinterlands becomes an item for sale in an Irish kid's website. Uh, so, you, I mean, there's literally no work. The one by hand thing that he would have to do, which is the, the actual drop shipping, he, he farms out order fulfillment by hiring digital workers on the platform Upwork for three, four, and five dollars an hour. Madrigal says that when I searched the platform last week, there were 275 open jobs for drop shipping. Shipping, 200 for AliExpress specifically, 132 for Oberlo. And there's all sorts of other things. There's little timers that will say, "Oh, we're almost running out. You better order right now," even though that's not true. And I mean, just on and on. And the kid doesn't own any inventory. Doesn't have to have any inventory. Doesn't even have to have any money up front. Basically, this is a, he just creates this. Entity. It's like Cafe Press, only bigger and worse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, really fascinating article. And I think a cautionary tale. That's why I want people to read it. The strange brands in your Instagram feed. Because, well, yeah, some of these are fine. I noticed this. Like, all of a sudden, maybe it's me. I'm starting to see a lot of... Remember, it was like those ads for wallets. I'm starting to see a lot of ads for wall clocks. And I bet you they're cheaply made. You know, you, they they glue a Xerox of the face because it looks really cool and this brightling and stuff. And I'm sure they're, I bet you, I don't know. I'm just saying. So Fire. why Fire. don't you create the Toots the Unicorn Fund? I could. Expose this sort of thing. I could. Anyway, that's my thing of the week. That's my, our show for the week. And I thank you all for joining us. And I apologize if you're a Trump voter. I just apologize. <laughs> And if you're still here, I don't I'm s I am don't know what to say. Thank you. <laughs> Blame Jeff Jarvis. Pinko that he is. He's a pinko in pink. Professor. Well now you know. He's an intellectual, an East Coast intellectual. Hey, that does it. At the yeah. City University of New York. He's probably Jewish. He's at buzzmachine.com, <laughs> author of What Would Google Do? Public Parts. All about privacy. Gutenberg the Geek and Geeks Bearing Gifts All About News. He's great. We love Jeff, and I thank you so much for being here, Jeff. You're a cuck to the core. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy Higginbotham, what more can I say? But you're like an old girlfriend. You, you know, you just keep... <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Stay, oh, you do Stacey, like... Uh, Stacy on IoT. Where is my punching Punching spot? bag. We need one to come from both sides now. I'm just I'm just trying to set that up. Uh, Stacy on IoT is her IoT podcast with Kevin Tofel. Must listen. If you're interested in IoT, there's no better. And, of course, her newsletter is also at Stacy on IoT.com. She's Giga Stacy on the Twitter. 
Oh, I should have had us talk about a story. What story? Oh. What? 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 No, um, I had this like cool moment at CES where I changed the way I thought about broadband access, which was like super amazing for me because I think a lot about broadband. So that's why I was like, oh, I should have put that on the rundown. It was next really week. Can you do next it next week? week? It is totally not timely. It's just really interesting. Turn in, tune in next week for Stacy's Epiphany on most of these same stations. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Jeff. We do This Week in Google every Wednesday right after uh, Windows Weekly. It's about 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern, 21.30 UTC. You could tune in live, in fact, watch it at twit. But before we cut out all the anti-Trump stuff, uh, twit.tv slash live. <laughs> It wasn't anti-Trump. I'm just teasing you. You know it I am. It wasn't. You know oh, I am. Jokestery. I'm just, you're just joking around. Yeah. I'm just joking around, man. You hair jokes. You cuck you. Uh, <laughs> that's the weirdest <laughs> epithet, isn't it? It's just weird. It is. Yeah. Uh, you zagat you. Uh, we... <laughs> You can watch it live, twit.tv slash live. You can be in the chat room. In fact, you should be in the chat room if you're watching live because that's a great community. Uh, by the way, there you go. A community of people uh, getting together from all over the world on the internet. True. Since 2000, I started doing that 2004, I think. That's when I, no, no I'm sorry, 1994 on my radio show on uh, KSFO and then on KGO. And you know who was, I've said this before, the first moderator was Robert Scoble. Where is he now? Uh, anyway, thanks to our great, many, many, many great, <laughs> great moderators who uh, want to know. No, who take no. good care of our, uh, our of our chat room and make it. Uh, you know, as you said, with with curation comes greatness. A great place to be. IRC always a happy place to be. I come in in the middle of the night. They don't know it, and I watch. Is Scooter X your moderator for this He's show mostly? One of many moderators. There are probably oh, okay. a half dozen in there right now. Uh, but awesome. Scooter's very active. We love Scooter. Thank you, moderator. He's a great guy. Thank you, Mods. And Oz Ned. I don't know if it's a he or she, but... We don't know. That's part of it. We don't want to know. We don't know anything about them. We do know there are both men and women moderators. That's all we know. I know a little bit more, but... <laughs> I don't like, know. wow, that's a lot of mystery to build I'll up around. I'll never tell. Well, I want them to, I want them to uh, be anonymous because uh, they, they sometimes battle are battling the trolls, and I don't want them to... Uh, anyway, you know, get get in trouble. Uh, but they do a great job. IRC. We didn't even say where. IRC.twit.tv. You can do that in a browser, but if you have an internet relay chat client, IRC chat client, it's the best way to do that. And I keep one open all the time on my desktop at home because it's just great. There's always somebody in there. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, you don't have to watch live, by the way. You can you can get on demand versions of the show. Uh, the website is twit.tv slash twig. TWIT.tv slash twig. You can also subscribe, find your favorite podcast, and uh, and subscribe to Twig. That way you'll get it the minute it's done every week. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And we will see you next time on This Week in Google. Bye-bye.